What's, What's up, guys? guys? On this week's show... Guns. Lots of guns. How many children are you friends with? And hide keys are for white people? All that and more on this episode... Of One Giant Leap for Geeks. Cue the music! That's one small step for man. One giant leap for... Geeks. Welcome to another episode of OGLFG, where we talk about movies, video games, and all things in geek culture. I'm your host, Mike C Squared, and with me are my co-hosts, Benoit. I had something I was going to say here. I think it was a name. I, I don't remember, though. And DJ Melly Mel. Hey! Before we get started, I would like to let you know, if you enjoy the show, tell some friends about us. Share us on your social media. Whatever you choose to do, you're helping us let others know about the best damn podcast they've probably never heard of. Now, if you want to talk to us, the show is on Twitter. You can contact us at Giant Leap, the number four geeks. You can also get a hold of our resident DJ Melly Mel at Froggy Beaver. And Benoit is at Benoit Gaming. That's B-E-N-W-A-H Gaming. We have a tradition. And we must keep it going. So... What you been doing? Um, let's see. I just got back from being a human guinea pig, so that yeah. was fun. Yeah, you're, you're uh, full of holes. Yeah. <laughs> you got more holes than a chain link fence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was very bluntly asked if I could be a test subject in my mom's phlebotomy class. So I said yes, because I'm her biggest supporter. No. So they like dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say, explain to the kids what phlebotomy is. Okay, so for because I thought you were trying not... to say lobotomy, but you fucked it up. But okay, nope. I'm like, no, not nope. that. Okay, good. Well, no, she was lobotomy trying to say lobotomy, is... but she got a lobotomy, so they so she couldn't say it. You know, it's lobotomy. Lobotomy is with your brain, and they go in and they fuck some shit up. Phlebotomy is the person that draws your blood when you go to the doctor. Those titles are too closely related. They need to completely change that. But okay, okay. So you gave blood. Yep. Well, like small amounts. Mm. They just poke me enough to fill the little tube and then Yeah. So kids, if DJ Melly Mel just suddenly passes out during a podcast. <laughs> you hear a large clunk. <laughs> right. Hey. right, you're right. I'll, I'll be all right. Just yeah. give give me some fluids. Yeah. Yeah, some juice and a give cookie. Give some orange juice and yep, a cookie. Yep. Oh, you, yeah. There you go. See, we know this. All right, Benoit. Flubot. What about you? What you been doing? Man, like I am in a the days are longer. The weather is not as warm as I would like it to be, but it still is late March. But I, I'm, like, slowly getting into that whole spring cleaning kick. Nice. Like, I'm starting to clean up the house. Well, I mean, I, I keep the house relatively clean, but, I mean, like, I'm going through things. I'm rearranging things, taking care of the spe- uh, spare bedroom. I'm going to probably rearrange, after that, probably going to rearrange the living room and my bedroom because I think I can actually give myself more space in here. Nice. Which it, will be better. Isn't it funny? We live in a state where winter is a long time. Wouldn't we do all this cleaning and rearranging shit when we're trapped in the house? Hell no. As opposed to when it's well, nice out? Hell no. No. Well, well, I understand where you're coming with that idea where we have more time in the house, so we would be more productive in the yeah. house. But I think the whole idea of spring cleaning is it's not so much that because it's spring, but because the sun is out. The weather's warming up. It's lighter. It's warmer. We're more motivated. We're happier because winter is, I believe, the most depressing season yep. of the year. Oh, yeah. You That's can... why the majority of the holidays are in the winter months as Seasonal opposed to depression. the- depression. Yeah, the spring and summer. It's like, because if you think about it, yeah, like, you... you got, like, all the Thanksgivings and the Christmases and all that other kind of, you know, Halloween. Everything happens once the weather is kind of going south to keep people from being depressed and killing themselves. Mm-hmm. At least that's my theory for back in the day. That, I mean, that's when a legit When you had no theory. TV and shit, that's and you know, you lived theory. in cabins and shit. It's like, what can we do to keep these people from dying? Let's get together with your family every two months. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but Christmas carols make me want to kill myself. Yeah, that's because we, we have worked in retail, and you currently work yeah, in retail, yeah. and everybody who's ever worked in retail knows that November 30th, they're starting to play Christmas carols. November? Or, Bullshit. I mean, October, October. Hell yeah, October shit. 30th, they're starting to play, you know, it's Halloween the next day. Oh, nope, we play Christmas carols, and then they yeah. play that shit until after New Year. Right. I think they just stopped playing it yesterday, to be honest. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
This just in. Apparently, I went to Wendy's earlier and forgot to rip off the sticker from the pop. Uh, I want a free spicy chicken sandwich. (laughs) Nice. You you can give me that on my way home because I'm starving. So, as for myself, um, nothing too spectacular this week besides the, you know, on a previous episode of One Giant Leap for Geeks, uh, I talked about the basement flooding. Yes. And we finally got that all gutted out for the most part. Now we just got to start cutting away at wood and getting all the stuff that's probably molding now out of the basement and um i'm 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 gonna do a public service announcement fuck you if you're a scrapper i'm just gonna put that out there like i you are the scum of the fucking earth (laughs) DJ Melly Mel, I hate your guts and your ilk in the cloth that you were cut from. Die. No, um, no, I, I don't have anything intrinsically against scrappers, but when I was on my way to work the other day, there were some guys going through our trash and shit, and I'm backing out the driveway and I stop at the curb and I'm like, hey, look, guys, like, I this shit's out here for trash. I don't give a shit about it. You can take whatever you want. Just don't leave it a fucking mess when you leave. And they're like, oh, we never do. Fast forward to me coming home from work. Trash everywhere. These sons of bitches, because I had it in, like, bags and boxes. Like, had it all nice and neat because I don't want the trash people not to pick it up because there's just a bunch of shit outside. Right. These sons of bitches took, like, fucking box cutters and just cut every single trash bag open, like, down the side. Just, like, gutted it like it was a fucking pig. And there's just trash all in my front yard. Boxes are just thrown upside down. See, or that's shit ridiculous. Spilled everywhere. It was just like they just ransacked it. And I'm pretty sure they probably pissed on it, too, before they left and just laughed as they were going down the street. If I'm going to pull something out of somebody's trash, I'm going to do everything I can not to disturb. Right. And Anything I'm like, around except for what I'm looking at. And it's like, I get it. If you think that there's something valuable in one of the bags you want to get to, that's fine. Bring Untie you, the fucking bag. I say, bring your own trash bags. Gut or it, take the bag with you. Nothing with I'm it. like, or cut it in such a way to where you can retie it. You don't cut it down the side right. of the bag to where I can't do anything to tie it back up. I was so pissed off. Me and Amber probably spent a good 20 minutes outside in the cold in the middle of the night with our fucking flashlights on our phone trying to fix everything, trying to dodge fucking cars, trying to kill us on the way. I, I was livid. You don't understand. Oh, so. uh, that's horrible. No. Yeah. Fuck so I, I am I, not one of those kind of diggers. Yeah, so fuck them and uh. Anyway. <laughs> I know, pretty much, right. I'm like, you fake-ass Red Sanford sons of bitches. <laughs> oh, we just got copyright. <laughs> but all right, moving on. Searches trace the origin of spring cleaning to the Iranian Nowruz, the Persian New Year, which falls on the first day of spring. Iranians continue the practice of Kuna Tekuni. Literally, shake in the house, just before the Persian New Year. Everything in the house is thoroughly cleaned. From the drapes to the furniture, I wonder what my equivalent to this should be. Maybe wiping my memory banks. We're at that part of the year where we're not quite fully into, like, the spring onslaught of movies, but they're coming. And everybody's putting their trailers out for stuff that's going to be coming out in the summer and late summer going into the fall. And we got another trailer for John Wick 3. We did. John Wick Parabellum, as yes. some would call it. And it, it looks dope. It looks dope. I mean, it. I can't say really a whole lot, nothing bad about it. I... I love the the John Wick franchise. I love what they've done with it. I love Keanu Reeves in general. So, yes. you know, anytime I can see him in pretty much anything. I haven't watched the fucking Lake House, okay, because Keanu Reeves is in this shit. So. I did, too. That was the only reason I watched the Lake House. And it wasn't even that good of a movie. Not for Sandy Bullock, though? No. Actually, it was kind of to see them both together because the first movie I think I ever saw Keanu Reeves in was Speed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, to see them back together, I'm like, yeah, they're not on the bus that's going to explode or whatever, but hey. They have good chemistry. Yeah, like, I, I can I, I can go with it. Uh, that being said, though, I did put a uh, poll out on Twitter um, saying, after seeing the newest John Wick 3 trailer, it got me thinking, have we jumped the shark yet or just keep on bringing it crazy? 
and I wanted to know if people were looking forward to the film and would they want it to end after the after this installment or mm-hmm. just keep making them like make it like the Fast and Furious franchise and just you know Get John like Wick eight them. John Wick Wicks again or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, so the options were we jump the shark, keep on bringing the crazy, and wins Bill and Ted three. And with a fifty three percent vote out of one hundred twenty five votes, keep bringing the crazy one okay. out. And 38% of the poll was when's Bill and Ted 3? <laughs> Surprisingly. That's so funny because yeah. I couldn't vote in that because those are my two my two questions. Like, keep bringing me the John Wick crazy, but mm-hmm. also I need some Bill and Ted in my life. That is true. That is true. That, though, though, I guess to be more specific, it's not that I dislike, obviously, like I said, I love these movies. Sure. But Watching this trailer, there is some shit that happens in this where I was just like, okay, we're getting to that almost Vin Diesel jumping over a freeway to catch Michelle Rodriguez in the air and smashing into another car kind of crazy. Because, I mean, okay. Yeah, but we're not at Hobbs and Shaw crazy. Are we, though? Uh, Not quite. The man has a samurai sword fight against motorcycles on a horse okay <laughs> like, that is true. It, it's really getting to that point where it's just like this might be getting a well, little bit too crazy well we did think he's a time traveler so that that is true he just yeah, or he vampire just, yep a yeah. vampire traveler whatever right. immortal some immortal some kind. so highlander maybe he's just in his element there <sighs> i guess i guess um i do like that they keep making little references to the matrix movies though yes. and this like um I forget what the one was in John Wick 2, but in the trailer, he says the line of, um, he's like, oh, what do you need? And he's like, guns. Lots, Lots of, guns. of guns. And I'm like, that's the line he says to Trinity right before they go to try and save Morpheus. Right. I, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting here gushing about it and shit. What, what about you guys? Like, is there anything in this that you are like, holy shit, that looks really cool or anything that, you know, story-wise? Because it seems like... They are introducing a few new characters, but we're still kind of following that same story from the end of the second movie. I like this whole him against the whole world thing. Yeah. Like, if somebody were to take on, if we were to take one of our action heroes Mm -hmm. and they were going to take on the world, Mm -hmm. top three would be John Wick. Okay. Frickin' um, John McClane. Okay. And the Terminator. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Those are the three. They're going to take on the world. I, I'll give you that. I would have thrown um, Liam Neeson yep. somewhere in there, but sure, we can go with that. I like it. I like it. <laughs> what about you, Benoit? Any any thoughts on the trailer? Yeah, actually, one, uh, despite the fact that at the end of the second film, he was excommunicated from the Continental, mm-hmm. it seems that Winston is still helping. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Which could be problematic. Mm-hmm. And apparently he is going to have another friend in the form of fucking the luscious Hallie God Mary, damn. who seems to control God dogs. God damn, yeah. Right, she's right. She was storming the X-Men and she controlled the weather and now she controls dogs in this. <laughs> and and uh, my cousin watched the first film and she's like, I didn't like it. It was all about a dog. And I'm like, uh, no, one, it wasn't, but I'm not going to – I digress. Uh, I, just, I brought that up only because Angelica Houston – who says in the trailer, all of this of a pu- over a puppy? And I'm like, you. It just made me think back. All of this over a puppy, she goes. I'm like, oh, that's my cousin fucking. That's, yeah, yeah, that, that's funny. And, and I mean, and we know that there is more to it than just that. But for the people who are just fighting John, they're just like, yeah, man, like he must have really just loved that fucking dog. <laughs> that dog in that car, like Jesus. Which, I mean, to be fair, it was a pretty dope car. Yeah, and that was a really damn cute puppy. And it was an adorable puppy. No, that is fair. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I remember at the end of the trailer, uh, it gave us a message. Text John Wick to 91099. I'm going to do that now. Yeah, I, I caught that too. And see what Your happens. Your phone's going to explode. <laughs> this message will self-destruct. Uh, it's like, whoops, wrong Wick. franchise. Uh, what? I just did that now. Okay. Let's see what happens. Did you guys... I am still ever impressed by the fight choreography in these movies. Yes! It reminds me of, like, the raid. Like, some Um, of the shit that they do in this... There's a scene in the trailer where he's, like, having a knife fight with some dudes Mm -hmm. in, like, this little hallway type thing. And he's just, like, throwing knives into this dude on Mm -hmm. the floor. And I was like, God damn, that is dope as shit. Like it's fucking ridiculous, but it, it's it's cool. Like, 
Go ahead. Most of the time, you know, when they have fight scenes and you can see that it's like, oh, extend arm. Mm -hmm. Oh, punch up fist. Oh, Mm -hmm. you know, that really broken up fight scene Yeah, a lot of jump cuts and close-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, you know, they do that in like the old-timey Bruce Lee movies and shit. Yeah. Well, the 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 Batman movies that you hate, the Christopher Nolan movies, they were notorious for that. It was like, I know he's beating up somebody, but I can't really tell what's and happening. And usually I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you can literally sit and count, okay, and you can see he's like, oh, you know, somebody practicing in the mirror. Okay, step one, step mm-hmm. two, step three. I like it in John Wick. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I think it because works, the, the fight choreography in these movies are messy. <clears throat> Like, it's not just like, ha, 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 punch, kick, block. It's right. like they're falling on the floor. They're crashing through shit. And then not only that, they keep the camera wide so you can actually see the that fight. That could be it. The, because a lot angle. of times when they get so close, it's just like you just see fists flying. And I'm like, right. I don't know what's happening. Somebody's getting hit, but I don't know why. <laughs> right. That could be it. That could be the camera angle thing. Yeah. So so what'd you get? what'd you get back as a response, Ben? It sounds as if I am now maybe a member of the, uh, the Continental. Continental myself. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, and I quote, Welcome. As an esteemed member, you will be granted access to our finest amenities. We will text you at this number in the days to come. Be prepared. That's kind of Like, scary. if this results in me getting, like, a free movie ticket or something, I'm fucking that, all that's, that's cool. I and or like... Keanu is going to show up at your door with a fucking shoddy, like, ah... <laughs> hey man, if Keanu Reeves shows up to kill me, I'm cool with that. That's right. true. Like, hey, if you got to go some kind of way, that's probably going to be one of the top coolest ways to go out. But yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm really excited for this. I, I, I think this should be it though, because th- they did say there was going to be like a spinoff TV show, mm. um, kind of just exploring the other assassins. Me. Yeah. So it won't be just John, it'll just be that world of the assassins and stuff. I think we talked about that. Yeah, and, and that could be okay, maybe. And he's supposed to make some appearances yeah. every now and then. Yeah, he's going to occasionally pop up or whatever. Kind of like they did with that show from uh, that Bradley Cooper movie, Limitless, where he took the drug that made yeah, him super yeah, yeah, smart, yeah. and they made a show out of that, and he pops up every now and then. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, think... yeah, yeah. It, I think like the first and last episode of the first season, then it got like canceled, so uh. who knows. Uh, but no, no, I, 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 I do want this to be it though, because I, I feel like if they try to keep it going with the, his character too long, then it's just going to, like I said, go off into that fast and furious territory yeah. and he's going to be catching torpedoes with his arm, like the rock and shit. And it's just like, okay, like this is too much. We saw a movie with, uh, Keanu not too long ago and I think it was called, was it the uh, replacements? No, no. That was way long ago. No, no, not not that. Um, but, but his family are like cloned robots or some shit. Oh no, because that just came out. No, recently. it wasn't that. Okay. Um, the one where he was a samurai. No, he wasn't a samurai. He was. I like, still want to see that. He's like you. a CIA agent, and he was in Russia, hmm. Siberia. That's what oh, okay. It was okay, I know what you're talking about. Okay, was it good? It, it felt like a John Wick. Okay. Like the way that he went through the movie and kill everybody. Pretty much. Okay. Like the the way that he went through the whole movie, he felt like a. Like a John Wick kind of thing. And I was like, all right, I could go for this. Yeah, like I said, he 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 kind of went that Liam Neeson route where it's like he got older and he's just like, every movie I'm going to make, I'm just going to kill everything that moves. Well, you know, he, <laughs> he doesn't take a script unless he reads through it and he likes the message that the script holds. Right, kill everybody. <laughs> he's like, he's such a soft-spoken, nice guy. You know, this is his outlet for all his violence and shit, I the guess. The man still rides the, the subway trains, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, and I've seen him, like, people have videoed. Yeah, of him, like, giving up his train. seat for yeah, an old lady he'll or give something. Up a yeah. Seat or... yeah. I'm like, this And then he, dude... like, stabs her and shit. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's got a lot of compassion. And then you turn around and you watch John Wick and you're like, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, no. Definitely looking forward to it. And we will keep you updated on Ben's assassination um, initiation. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing ain't happened to you in a week, Ben, I might text that number. Right, right. If right. we don't hear from you next Tuesday. Right, well, we, we know what happened. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I just got a race too much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even get to live to see it kick in. Nope. All right, moving on. I am getting a breaking news story. It would seem that Keanu Reeves is in fact a vampire. You heard it here, folks. Hashtag confirmed. Uh, 
can't. I I I am of two minds about this. You uh, do? Yeah, it's it's the newest. The as as the trailer says, the ninth film by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood, and it. It was funny because uh, when me and Benoit went to go see Us, the trailer for this show, and I think Benoit was your first time seeing it, right? Yeah, it was my first time seeing yeah. the film. Well, no, 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 no the, the, trailer. the trailer for uh, I, I've I've seen trailers was, before. What for this movie? That asshole. was my first time seeing the trailer <laughs> for that movie. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it was my first time seeing the trailer. Okay, and I okay. Liked it. So. And it was funny because at the end, I told him, I was like, you know, it's funny because watching this, you wouldn't realize that this movie is going to take place around the Sharon Tate murders, uh-huh. who is a actress yeah. who was murdered by family. members of the Charles Manson family. Right. And it's like this kind of like, oh, you know, we're making jokes about taking loads and, you know, all this other kind of shit. And we're fighting Bruce Lee and everything else in this like They show Charles Manson, or at least the actor that's playing him, in the trailer, too, mm-hmm. for a second. And I was just like, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about this because I, I would kind of feel wrong to watch a film with Tarantino's kind of love of violence and his sensibilities about gore and shit like that. Not normally, but specifically because it's going to be depicting actual people who were murdered. Right. Because the character that Margot Robbie is playing is Sharon Tate. That is the woman. And she's actually like seven eight maybe even nine months pregnant when they kill her Mm -hmm. and i'm like i don't know how i feel about that like that's kind of dark on on like a different dark especially even for him i'm like this is kind of fucked up so i'm I'm really interested to see how the movie plays out because they're just playing like hey we just making jokes and doing karate and shit and we got brad pitt and leonardo dicaprio and and i'm just like hmm okay what do you mean that's dark for him? Have you not seen any of his other films? Well, well, that's the thing. With those, they're fictional characters. So it's like, you, whatever. Like, right. you know, what like it's fucked up. What but he's sure. saying is it's more fucked up because Sharon Tate was yeah. a real happened. person. Right, right. And, and Marco I'm like, Robbie is portraying a real person. And I, I don't necessarily know that he's going to handle this with the kind of care that you should for you know i know it's not going to be a biography or anything per se right, right. or like a true crime movie but it's like he's telling this fictionalized story quote unquote around actual events it almost would be like if he made this movie around like you know like, united 93 like the say, flight like, from 911 or some shit 911 <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just like i'm like oh, i don't know how i feel about that especially if i was a family member of the person who was killed or yeah. people that were killed during that so so we'll see, because you know that whole big uproar people had about the uh, Ted Bundy movie mm-hmm. and about how they felt that they were playing too light and jokey with that. And it's like, you know, he was a fucking serial killer. Right. Like, people actually died, you know, and it's like we trying to make him out to be like he a rock star and shit. And it's like, granted, yes, that was his persona. But I still kind of understand where people were coming from. Like I said, especially because if you are related to. To the victims. Oh, yeah, sure. If you're affected by that, yeah, you're Yeah, gonna... I can see how that maybe would be in bad taste. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to jump to too many conclusions because they didn't show anything from that. Mm-hmm. But that's what I was surprised about because I was like, they're actually not hitting on what this movie is actually about in this trailer. Like, if you just saw the trailer and didn't know any of the backstory, you wouldn't know really yeah, what see, this I was at no all. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, it's and just now, like it's just a movie with some people in it, and they doing I'm shit. Like, it's a Tarantino, all right? right. They talking about stuntmen and actors. And I you guess. know what's funny is T Money was all excited. He's like, "Oh yeah, we got to go see that. It looks good." Yeah. And Brittany was like, "Oh my god, that looks good." I was undecided about it. I'm like, "Meh." I, I thought it was pretty funny, especially. I'm undecided about Tarantino though. Like, yeah, he kind of burned me with Django. I'm not gonna uh, lie, Django. Left a real bad taste in I my mouth. I forgot about Django. I'm like, mm, man. Uh, I we'll forgot see. about Django. Yeah. Like, the only one I like is from Dust Till Dawn. Really? And even then. That's... You ever seen um, um, uh, Reservoir Dogs or. I know, Pulp, Pulp Fiction? Fiction? Oh, how, like, how do you not like Pulp I Fiction? I forgot Pulp Fiction yeah, was that, come on now. Tarantino. Say what again? <laughs> I like Pulp Fiction. I, just I dare you. Tarantino. I double dare you, motherfucker. So, See, like, okay, so 90s Tarantino is way different than, like, now Tarantino. Yeah, no, no, I, I I do enjoy his older stuff a bit better, yeah. I don't know, I think this is actually going to be um, treated a bit like Pulp Fiction in the sense where they're going to be jumping back and forth between stories, because this is, as far as as far as far I'm aware of, going to be, uh, it's going to be a dark comedy, obviously, as you could tell from the trailer, but it's also going to be, like, a little bit of maybe, like, a crime noir as well. 
So I'm hoping this is going to be... I'm thinking this might somewhat be like Pulp Fiction, except everything is connected, whereas in Pulp Fiction, some things don't really tie with the main... Like, there's multiple different stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the only connecting tissue is the... whatever the fuck is glowing in that case that Marcellus Wallace wants, but... I don't know. I, I... I, 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 I do wonder, though, how many other directors have tried and probably failed to get Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt in the same fucking movie? Because they, as far as I know, they've never done anything together before. And they're, like, two of, like, Hollywood's, like, or if giants. Or if they did, they were both real young. No, I don't think they've ever done no? anything. No? No, because uh, no. Brad Pitt's substantially older than DiCaprio. He's got a good 10, 15, right. maybe 20 years on him. So, Well, that's what I mean. If they would have done anything together, DiCaprio would have been a baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, Not well, maybe well, like a baby. Now that I think but... about it, sure. uh, Brad Pitt's, I may be wrong about this. Somebody on Twitter can, of course, correct me, and I know they will if of I'm course. wrong about this. But as, as far as I recall, Brad Pitt's first major role was in Thelma mm-hmm. and Louise. And at that time, that was before DiCaprio even began doing Growing Pains for their final yeah. season. Because uh, I think the first film he was in that was any noticeable or relatively big. If it wasn't huge, it may have been bigger than I'm making it out to be. But um, DiCaprio's first major film, to my knowledge, was yeah, once Gilbert he Gilbert's Grape. Yeah, yeah like, like I said, I'm, I'm almost certain they've never done anything together. So I'm like, I was really surprised to, to see them. And as well, too, I was like, wait, so Brad Pitt is Leo's stunt man i'm like oh i thought that was funny they they would have to be doing some real good camera work to hide his the age difference and height difference and shit between them because i'm like they don't look alike really i mean they just look like two white dudes but other than that it's just like they don't really look alike to me but whatever yeah but this this takes place in the 60s so if hollywood could already fake the moon (laughs) nice (laughs) now uh a little bit of uh trivia if you guys did not already know this will technically be, well, not technically, it is. This will be the last film that Luke Perry stars in prior to his death. You're absolutely right. That is right. All, he's in the film, and all his scenes were filmed uh, just prior to his death. However, um, on, well, on a different note, not however, on a different note, they wanted to get Burt Reynolds on this film as well, but unfortunately he died before he could have any of his shots. Damn, is this going to be one of them, like, cursed movies where, like, everybody involved either died, like, filming it or died right before they filmed it? Uh, no, I think it's just it, it's just the timing. Um, however, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character Rick Dalton is based on Burt Reynolds. Yeah, yeah, and and that's why I said I'm like they have these like fictionalized characters around these actual characters. That's why I'm like I'm I'm just curious how he's gonna play this. But we'll see. So, moving on. Moving on. Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yay! Where does Sam Jackson fit into this, motherfucker? Sorry, it felt wrong not to say it. I want to say, I want to put out right out there, right in front, um, I am a Stranger Things whore. I love Stranger Things. It has been the highlight of Netflix for me outside of like the Daredevil series. I honestly, it's, it's like, if you haven't seen Stranger Things, it's like, think the Goonies meets like War of the Worlds, like, and maybe a little bit of, um, um, the outer limits sprinkled in there. Like it's, it's a really, really good show. I mean, if any of those things sound good to you or if you enjoy any of those things, Trust me, go watch Stranger Things. It is, it is, it is well worth the, uh, and I think it's only like 10 episodes or something like that. So it's not like a super long series or about an hour a piece. So you can over a weekend knock out both seasons. Like it's really good. But the newest trailer came out for this and I like how it's set up around the 4th of July and it's coming out on the 4th of July. I'm like, that's really cool. Cause I believe the last season came out on Halloween because I think it was set during Halloween or around that time. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, I, I just love this series and I think it's been a really fun ride. Um, all the characters I find just like really interesting. Like they come off as types in the beginning, but the further the series goes on, I'm like, you know, 
they actually wrote some good character arcs for a lot of these characters, and they have depth to them, and they're not just like, you know, typical 80s cool guy, and typical, you know, shy 80s girl, and, <laughs> you know, typical 80s, you know, fat kid, and shit like that, and typical, you know, <laughs> 80s minority kid. Like, they all have actual layers to them, and I'm like, I... I I was impressed at what they were able to do with this because when you first see them, it's just like they're kind of just types, but then they actually become people as it goes on. Oh. So you have not seen Stranger Things. I have things. never seen Stranger Things. Uh, what about you, Benoit? I've only ever seen the first okay, episode. Okay. So then I'm the only one who's yeah, watched both seasons then. Um, that's why I'm nodding. She's like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sounds like a fun time. <laughs> um, we, we don't really know much about what's happening with this season. Uh, the first season was kind of like setting up the whole world of this like small town that has this um, lab that is doing these experiments, trying to like cross over into alternate dimensions and shit. And they let out a bunch of demons and all this crazy shit. And there's this little girl with like telepathic powers or I'm sorry, telekinesis more so than telepathy. I don't think she can read your mind, but she can, you know, move shit with her mind. Oh, so it's like a failed X-Men. Kind of, sort of, a little bit, a little bit. Um, and there was a bunch of other kids who they were doing the experiments and shit with, but she was the most successful and or the only one that survived. Uh, they call her Eleven. Okay. Um, because she was like the Eleventh subject. Um, and it, there's like the, the town sheriff and, you know, he's real skeptical about shit that's going on. And the uh, main character or one of the main characters, um, he gets taken into the dimension uh, the mother's all freaked out about it. It's this whole thing, but it, it it's really good. And then the second season, we get the kid back, but he's still affected by what happened to him from the upside down, which is what they call it. And there's this big giant demon monster thing that's trying to take over the town and turn the whole town into the upside down world. It, it I'm not doing it justice. It's really convoluted, but it's really good. So it sounds like Buffy meets X-Men meets Bates Motel. Yep, and the Goonies. And the Goonies. And uh, a little gotcha. bit of, um, what's that movie where, like, the Soviets, like, invade this small town? They... Wolverine! Red, Red Dawn, thank you, yes. I was like, they did, they did a remake of it recently. Kind of a little bit of that in there, too. And um, this one, they they had some elements of, like, the Terminator in the trailer, because they, they show a guy in this, like, house of mirrors, mm -hmm. and he's, like, all black, and he has a gun. And I was like, he kind of looks like the Terminator right there. Because they do a lot of nods like, 80s movies, like E.T. and shit like that throughout okay. the show. Because I guess... The... And it'd probably be something that I'd like. Oh, yeah. Because the like, guys who like made it are real, movies. like, 80s fanboys and shit like that. They tried to make this into a movie, but nobody would take them up on offer. And then Netflix was like, yeah, we'll do it. They was like, you know what? We should just make it a show. And then it became one of the most popular things Netflix has ever done. And now everybody's like... You should watch Stranger Things. Right, beating their heads against the wall. Like, why didn't we take them up on this offer? It's like, we could have had a whole cinematic universe of this shit by now. But, um... <laughs> one of the things I thought was just funny is just the, the relationship between the quote-unquote cool guy and the kid. You see him in the trailer where they're doing a little Star Wars thing uh -huh. and they're smashing uh -huh. shit together. Because he's like the, the cool kid in the first season. And... There's another kid who's like the loser and they both like the same girl and there's this whole back and forth thing. But he ends up as time goes on, you learn See, he's, he's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like he's not a bad guy and shit like that. And he be befriends the children and shit like that. And that's why the girl makes fun of him and says that line about like, how many children are you friends with? And it's like, there's like eight more back here, actually. Like one of them got superpowers and shit is actually pretty cool. Goonies. Uh, Thanos was in Goonies, man. I just, it just come to me. Yes, yes, Josh Brolin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> back to Stranger Things. She's like, yep, yep. Just wanted to put I that I just in wanted there. to put that out there, that Thanos was in Goonies. Yes. In case our listeners are young and don't know what the Goonies are. Yeah, go go watch Goonies. This is just a yes, good movie. Yes, everybody should watch Goonies. Yeah, Goonies is awesome. But yeah, I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. It comes out July 4th. and My birthday. Woo woo. Yep, we will see what the further adventures of telekinetic orphan and friends are up to this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving, moving on. on. Did you know that Thanos is also in Deadpool 2? I swear, basic.
Welcome to Benoit's Webbit Hole. It's where I, Benoit, give you a brief synopsis of random things I found interesting on the internet. Some of these things may be further elaborated on in future podcasts, but I'd recommend you dig deeper for yourself if you're interested. The views and opinions expressed in the Wabbit Hole are those of Benoit's and Benoit's alone, and do not necessarily reflect the position of any member, affiliate, or future sponsor, despite us not having any of the One Giant Leap for Geeks podcast. You know, throughout the week, I, I kind of dabble in the news cycle and come up with some things for this wabbit hole. But uh, just this morning, I came across a video which is completely pff, wiped out what I was going to do this week. Because, uh, well, Mike, you know. Mel, you don't really know of this about me. But I am a huge fan of amusement yes. parks and theme parks. I like you more already. Oh, it sounds like, sounds like Mel Hell is yeah. as well. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you haven't actually uh, started yet, right? I, no, we're we're, really oh, okay, okay, we're doing this. Right. <laughs> Everything that's been said can be part okay, of the wabbit hole right. this week. Breaking the fourth <laughs> wall. Anyway, I came across this video by this uh, guy called uh, Theme Park Crazy, or that's at least his name on YouTube, and he also has a website, Theme Park Crazy. And he came up with uh, 10 weird accidents at amusement parks, and it got me thinking, hell, man, how many fucking top 10 lists have I had on his wabbit hole in the course of three months? Quite Let's a keep few. it going. So these are, yeah, quite a few. So these are 10 weird accidents at amusement parks, and I want your guys' opinion okay. on some of these. In no particular order, uh, number one, and this is pretty recent. This actually happened a couple weeks ago. I believe it was Wednesday, uh, March oh, 13th. Damn. It happened in New York. Mm-hmm. Before I actually get into the story, let me preface this by asking you guys, have you seen the original National Land? Of yes. course. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the whole the whole like ending of that? Oh, uh, vaguely, but yeah. Okay, well, if you don't, if you vaguely remember it, this will kind of tie in. There was a 19 year old by the name of Jonathan Qualpa. He stole a taxi in New York and planned to drive it to New Jersey to go check out Six Flags mm-hmm. Great Adventure. Now it's a bit of a long drive, and he got kind of tired, so he pulled over and took a nap in the back seat, and that's how he got caught. You know because. He stopped moving and taxis have a GPS. Anyway, even had he made the trip to Six Flags, his timing was off as the park doesn't even open till April 6th. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. <laughs> uh-huh. This reminds me of, of, of Lampoon when they get to Wally World and okay. it's closed. <laughs> that, that, that's the time. Okay. Now, he's currently awaiting trial. He has a, He's been charged, but he's not, um you know, been prosecuted yet. But speaking of New Jersey, remember 2012 when we had a lot yeah. of hurricanes? Hurricane uh, Hurricane Sandy took out quite a bit of um, Jersey, including uh, a pier in Seaside Heights, which dropped a roller coaster named Starjet into the Atlantic Ocean. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, it was in the ocean for a good couple of months. It was a, it was a sight. You could not miss it if you okay. lived in the area. All right. Anyway, a curious 38-year-old surfer named Christopher Angelo wanted to raise awareness for what happened, and so he took a boat out there, climbed on the coaster with provisions, including a uh, sleeping bag to go uh, stay out there for a couple of days. And he got so patriotic, he planted an American flag. Of course he did. (laughs) And he even took photos of it for social media and called up a radio station to let them know. Of course he he did, because what's the point of doing anything if you're not going to get the publication? (laughs) Exactly. He informed the radio station that he didn't have any weapons, so, like, if the police came for him, you know, he wasn't going to sure. fight or anything. Anyway, he did end up getting arrested for uh, doing that, and footage of this showed a police officer taking off his hat as they were walking him through the ocean to the shore. His hat had a camera, I'm guessing like a GoPro. The cop took his hat with a GoPro on it and just <gasps> threw it in the ocean. Damn. What the hell? Yeah. You know, I I, I get it, though, because yeah. the, they're probably pissed because it's like, man, come on, man. It's like, we got to go out here, spend all this money and resources to go get your silly ass off of this bullshit. I got to go out into the middle of the fucking ocean to come get you. Fuck there. you and your GoPro ass. I'd have left in there. <laughs> Been like, ah, oh, you only got enough food. He'd be like, hey, this is sovereign land, man. You got enough food for 30 days. I right, I see you in 31. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we got another semi-recent story. This happened back in October. There was a 21-year-old Navy sailor named Adrian Gilbert Cardenas 
who was drugged up and drunk, and he decided to let it all hang out, got naked, and went crazy in the parking lot. He even tried breaking into cars. Some of those cars still had people in them. Sounds like a bad bad Thursday night in the college town I went to. And, of course, the cops were called, and he was all hopped up on shit, so we tried fighting police, but he didn't get very far before he got tased, subdued, and uh, sent to jail. He was charged with felony assault of an officer and indecent exposure. So good luck going door to door wherever you live and explaining to people. (laughs) What'd that one have to do with roller coasters, though? Was he at a theme park? No, no. Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. okay. You left that part out. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Well, everything everything takes place at a theme park or music park, something. I mean, I didn't. Ex- I, I guess I didn't specify which parking lot. Maybe it was your local park. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. I've seen Spider-Man rob a gas station. I, I was just waiting for you to say somebody <laughs> slammed his dick in the and door. I've also seen two guys in Spider. Oh God! <laughs> Wait, what? Because he said he was be running around naked trying to get into people's cars, and uh-huh. I was just waiting for him to say that somebody slammed his dick in that car door. Ooh. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that, that was stopped. All that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like it's okay, officers. We got this under control. We got him. He right here. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> But if you want to know specifics about the location of these events, I'll tell you right now, this next one happened at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom in California, also last year in May. Some douchebag, some 24-year-old at the time douchebag named Christopher Allen entered a restricted area on a dare and punched a camel. The fuck? Why do they have camels at Six Flags? That That is weird. Because you pay right. with them. Cows, dude. Cows. Uh, wait, wait. Nice callback. What? Nice Why? Call it, w- it was a camel exhibit. I mean, Cedar Point has like an area with farm animals. Do they? It's just an yeah, I was going to say, I've never been to that yeah. part of the park. In the, in the back I must of the have park. never gone to the back in of the, the back park. park. I've not been to Cedar Point in 18 it's, year, 19 years this year. Jesus. That makes me sound It's old. like the old <laughs> yeah, western does. town-esque area like where they got like, Oh, the yes. I know what you're talking about. But I didn't, I didn't see the animals, though. Yeah, I, I did. Oh, nice. I fed some of them. Um, anyway, this this 24-year-old douchebag on a dare got into a restricted area and punched a camel. Of course, park security got him, like, right away from doing that, but he escaped. And the police actually chased him and his getaway driver uh, named Chrissy Thatcher. It was a woman? They can't. There was a, oh, he was there with a woman. The woman you say it like women don't commit crimes. <laughs> she was like, it was a woman? Yes. Women aren't usually getaway drivers. Yes, bitches is ain't what shit. I was uh, yes, at. yes. <laughs> no, no, hey, no. Remember, the woman's the first one to commit a crime biting the apple, but I digress. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> women can be serial killers, and women can be like criminal masterminds. But not getaway drivers. But usually they're not the getaway driver. You must didn't, You must don't watch Orange is the New Black. Uh, There's a character on there who no, got never seen caught it. up for a... being a getaway driver. Have you ever heard of Danica Patrick? Yes, I know who Danica Patrick is. She's not a getaway driver. Mm -hmm. She is a driver of NASCAR. Hey, you don't know her life. She might have did some shit. No, she tries to get away from all the other cars. (laughs) Move on. What's the next one? This was bad. This was not the worst. This was not the most douchebaggery thing this guy did. After this, he attempted to auction off the shoes he wore when he escaped. Wow. Wow. He was asking to go to jail. So he? so tell me that they finally have caught this person. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, they, they caught him. Because I'm like, like yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ, man. Like, this dude, he's becoming like an internet legend, like, every day that he's still out in the world. I'm still free. <laughs> Story number five, we're going to go to Disney World, Hollywood Studios. Uh, have you ever been to Disney, no. either one of you? No. My... Okay. Well, of I course, I'm sure you know at Disney World and Disneyland, Disney. they have a lot of people. Right. You know, they have a lot of people that are dressed up like characters in Disney films, animated or television uh-huh. series. And they had a guy who was in a Tigger uh-huh. costume. He was just doing a standard photo op with a family, and then he ended up getting suspended without pay because he pie faced a 14 year old. Why? Like took a pie to the 14 year old's face. That that's yeah. I, I, I mean, just make sure. Just make sure. She's like. If you don't get the reference, a pie face is basically when he's like open palm oh, yeah. your buddy's face away. Oh, so he like Heisman it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And now the father of the boy claimed that uh, Tigger did that completely unprovoked. However, video evidence showed that the teen was doing something behind Tigger's back, messing with uh, the suit. Oh, but still. 
And many have speculated that the teen was trying to actually unzip the costume. Oh, yeah. Disney takes that shit pretty serious. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't break the illusion. Like, why <laughs> do you think that there are a bunch of tunnels underneath Disney? It's so that you can, not you as a uh, customer, but the <laughs> actors and actresses. Oh, you're talking about underground Disney. You yeah, just right. wait for later. Like, the um, actors and actresses in the costumes, they have to use the underground tunnels. Yeah, because you're never supposed to see them Cause you, in oh, the you costume them. as just regular people. And they yep. can never break character. Yeah. Nope. Anyway, while he was suspended without pay briefly, there were no criminal charges because, I mean, the video evidence shown that the Tigger was just What would you charge him with? Situation. Uh, assault on a minor. Really? For a pie in the face? That's assault? It, some people, yeah, because some people, it, it, they all claimed he, like, oh. punched the kid. But it, you can clues, because he, he pie faced the kid, uh. and the kid, like, moved. Because the kid was fucked, the, don't fuck with Tigger, right. basically. He, I double got, <laughs> er, motherfucker. <laughs> right, Tigger right, right. with ass. But now from Walt Disney World to Disneyland, once again in 2018, children's fear and laughter was... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just picturing, a, like, a Tigger bouncing around and he, like, throwing some Kung Fu John Wick punches. <laughs> Please proceed. Please proceed. Oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, we're going over to California now. We're going to keep it in the Disney realm in Disneyland. January of last year, children's fear and laughter was mixed as a... Literally, some kids were laughing, some kids were crying because of this. Um, a latch holding the animatronic head of Ursula from Ariel's Undersea Adventure ride <laughs> came loose. So it looked like she was decapitated. Damn. And it was just dangling by wires. Damn. Funny enough, though, despite the fact that it came off, it was still moving its <laughs> mouth and acting. Like, it was fine. Like, it wasn't broken. It was just hanging. Right. She's like, wires. poor unfortunate soul. And it's like sparks and shit coming out. I would have been one of the people laughing. <laughs> this video of this oh, my God. Happened. I have to look that up after the oh, show. That is there's a video of this that was put on Twitter, and you can hear, like, a little girl going, He's broken. <laughs> No, honey, it's all a part of the show. Nope. And anyway, if you thought that was funny, Ursula was not the only animatronic to get decapitated as a pirate from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride lost his head the exact same way on the same. Did somebody, like, go fuck with all no the function. animatronics and shit? Yeah. Well, no, no. I'm guessing. I'm guessing the technician who periodically checks these things just did not secure a latch. So. He didn't. Oh, he didn't do his job. He said, "Yeah, they ain't gonna know if I'm yeah, here he or not. This job. park is huge." He's off and going behind his dumpster to smoke this joy. I'm good. <laughs> did you go to work today? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, oh yep, yep. Everything's sure yep, yep. Worked my way around the whole Disney park. Right. I'm, I'm good. It's T's good. dotted, eyes crossed, all that shit. <laughs> While he's like smoking joints and yeah. riding the rides and getting fucked up, yeah, I'm on the clock. Like right. I should have known when he started wearing that Rastafarian hat. That <laughs> something was up with Peter, but <laughs> I just let it slide. <laughs> he puffing his mag and dragon. Hey man, well Disney is where the magic happens. When I went to Disney World in 2016, I was some I, I won't even say someone. I was really surprised. Now I realize there are going to be like bars and places where you can sure. buy alcohol because I mean there's adults there, right? When I went into the um the gift shop at the resort I was staying in, I was surprised to see, like, bottles of liquor for sale in right next to the liquors. A Why does that not surprise me? Because Disney yeah, is yeah. where magic You take happens. your kids to Disney, and you're forking out $4,000 for this damn trip. You better be getting something. All right, I better be fucking Snow White by yeah, the end of this shit. nine months later, you have more <laughs> Right, kids. exactly. Now you got a new one to take next year. No, you'd have to find out when a, a sitter. <laughs> no, yeah. By the way, if y'all never been to Disney World, it's fucking worth it. I would lo- I'd go back really? there again if I was eight oh, yeah. in a wheelchair. I'm I've always everybody yes, I've ever talked to yes. said Disney World well, that's is what everybody it's the tells greatest me. place on earth. That's what everybody tells me, but I can't I can't right. get past Hashtag the $4,000 copyright. ticket mm-hmm. price, you know. Okay. Well, well no, 4000 4, is hyperbole compared to what I spent. Uh, when I went sidebar, when I went in 2016, it was a family trip. I only had to pay for my portion of it, but when we were in the park, my my father's like, I cover the rest of your shit. Like, if you want to buy something personal, bring some money, but I got you covered for well, food. Shit. That's shit. great. When I went, yeah. Well, no, no, no. no. I'm, I'm going to tell you like how much everything cost for me. I paid for my round trip ticket, and I paid for my room in the resort. Er, the, the yeah, yeah. The that's what they call it. Desorts. All all, Disney. <laughs> yeah. I got we got there really lucky. We got there with a really good package for like spring break. All in all, I believe I paid about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars for everything. This was That's for um this was for uh four, four nights, five days with a park hopper pass, so I can bounce between all the parks freely. 
And in part of that deal became two square meals a day and three snacks. That's so for like fourteen hundred bucks, I got yeah, all. Yeah, I was say, and plus that's this plane fare and all that shit too. I'm like, it's not, it's not bad. It's reasonable. Okay. For I, a I, couple, I, I, that would be yeah. three thousand. Yeah, and then yeah. if you got kids, and yeah. then you buy the extra shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm not saying take your kids. You yeah. Don't look, do it by look, yourself. Look. I, take your man. I take your money there. Take Three hundred dollars and go to Six Flags. I'll be good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh yeah. We went yeah. to Six Flags last year. Anyway. Not like last March, I think, mm-hmm. or February. Whenever I went to Wisconsin for the tennis tournament. Mm-hmm. Oh, October. That's when it was. It was in okay. October because mm-hmm. it was dead week and whatever. Anyways, we went for two hundred dollars. We got our tickets for fifty bucks a piece, and nice. then we spent a hundred dollars in food and souvenirs and stuff. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, but yeah. Six Flags ain't no Disney though. I'm just saying. It'd be alright. I'm just, the best Thank you to place go see on some Bugs Earth. Bunny and call it good. I don't like the damn mouse anyway. Mm. Except for when he produces movies and then. Yeah, I was gonna say Iron Man involved. will be there, and you can go hug Captain America and shit. If I go to Disneyland or Disney World and Iron Man is there, Team Money's gonna end up pie facing Team <laughs> fucking Iron Man. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Okay, we're going to keep it in California at a place called Scandia Fun Center in Sacramento. Now, you guys have probably been to, like, local fairs. You, you, when I say the zipper ride, yes. you know what yes. I'm talking about, right? Okay. Well, imagine uh, something similar to that, except there's only one gondola, and it's not in a cage. So only two people can sit in it, and it goes up and around and around and around, and you back with that. Okay. Back up. Anyway, there was a, back to back to that. There was a ride called the Sky Screamer. It, now, its predecessor was called the Scandia Screamer. <laughs> Ironically, there was a rule for the screamer. Can you guess what it was? You, you can't scream. scream. Exactly. You cannot make noise, and you cannot make. You could not make noise because um, right next to this was uh, I uh, I eighty, a twelve lane freeway. But on the other side of the freeway and around the park where this was, all residential areas, houses. So everybody who lived around there could hear everything that was going on. Oh no! Fuck that shit. So. Yep. So there was a rule where you literally would go on a ride called the Sky Screamer and you couldn't scream or even make any noise. Otherwise, they'd kick you off. and send What you kind of like city council do they have where they okayed it for an amusement park to be built anywhere near a residential area? Like, that is absurd. Lame. Uh, you would think it would have to be like a business this- district or some shit like that. Like... Now, this rule was only in effect for about the first three weeks it was open because eventually they're like, this is bullshit. Plus, it was confusing some of the workers because they could hear noises from other areas of the park and confuse it with the people on the ride, and the people on the ride would get punished. That actually happened once where somebody got so excited for getting a hole-in-one in putt-putt, the person on the ride got kicked off. That's that's such bullshit, though. It's like, don't make a ride and say you can't scream or you get kicked off. Like, what kind of shit... You guys may not uh, remember this or realize this, but um, at the back of Cedar Point, there was the old wooden coaster, yep. the um, mm-hmm. Mean Streak. A couple years ago, they shut down the Mean Streak, and they decided to turn it into a hybrid where it was part mm-hmm. steel, part wood. And then they also opened up Steel Vengeance mm-hmm. last oh, year. Oh, okay. Now, yeah, because I wanted to get on that last year when I was chaperoning with the kids, but it was so goddamn windy it was shut down. Anyway, in July of last year, while waiting in line, a bunch of teenagers were messing around with hot chili sauce okay. packets. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I know this story. Go ahead. Yeah, one of those sons of bitches threw a chili packet at a train as it was coming down, and some of the sauce not only got on some of the riders' clothes, but in some mm-hmm. of the riders' eyes. Ow! Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I don't know how fast this coaster goes, but could you imagine going, like, 60 miles an hour and have fucking hot sauce splash in your eyes? Like, that'd be fucking torture. Mm-hmm. And then you gotta deal with it for 30 seconds until the ride's done. Yeah, right, shit. Well, no, not only until the ride is done, but until they stop it, let everybody off, run you down the stairs. Because I'm sure they don't have, like, an eye wash station nowhere no. close by. I'd be like, somebody give me your bottle of water. No. Right. No, that, that ride's off in, like, the back of the park. It, they'd be a while to get yourself to a bathroom from there. But if you think getting hot sauce in your eyes is bad, man, you guys might remember this story. And 
This happened back in 1999. Do you guys know? Who yes, is? yes. Mm-hmm. I know this one. <laughs> yep, in 1999, March of 99, uh, Fabio appeared for the grand opening of Apollo's Chariot, which was the newest coaster to open up in Busch Gardens in Virginia. Now, this was a spectacle. There was media there in everything. And people were waiting in line, and they even had cameras waiting while Fabio got on it in the front row with, like, a bunch of girls dressed in uh, togas. They waited for him to get off, and when the ride ended, all you could see was Fabio's eyes watered, his nose was all bloody, and he kind of looked like he wasn't 100% sure what was going on. If you think getting hot sauce in your eye is bad, imagining a Mm -hmm. fucking bird. (laughs) Boom. It was a seagull, wasn't it? Okay, uh, goose. No, okay, goose. I'm like, I know it was a bigger bird. It wasn't like, like, like. Don't think like them small birds that are like under your car in parking lots, like drinking like the water that drips off your car. No, like a big ass bird. Imagine going down that first drop and then just like a bird hits you in the face, like boom, and then having to go like the whole other minute to two minutes with just. It was probably trying to like grab some of his hair to make a <laughs> nest. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, the, be- the the biggest theory is that the bird actually got hit by the cart, and then its dead carcass flew back in his Damn! Body. So not only he got hit in the face by now a bird, it- but he got hit in the face by a dead bird. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately for Fabio, even though it hit him in the bridge of the nose, it did not break his nose. However, it did leave him bloodied, and he mm. needed to get a few stitches. Oh, bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> That's what started it all. Mm-hmm. And now <laughs> and now on to the final story that happened at an amusement park. And this does involve some underground things. We're going to take you back way back to right when Disney World first opened. Now, you know when there's a big old park and you have to have a lot of bathrooms. Uh, you know, you have to have a lot of mm-hmm. stuff for sewage. Pipes and everything underneath the ground. Well, they had these really huge ass pipes for water and sewage when they first opened um, Walt Disney World. Have either one of you used a bidet? No. Not that I... No. <laughs> no. Well, I, I have. Well, imagine... Okay. Imagine if your, to- imagine if your toilet became okay. a bidet. A woman used the bathroom on either like the second or third day of the mm. parking oven. And as soon as she flushed, the water pressure was built up so much from Ew. underwater those big pipes. That water literally shot up and blasted her ass Holy off shit. of the toilet. <laughs> Ew. It, um, um, now, is this like <clears throat> sewage water or is it just water water? Uh, well, I mean, if the, if the pressure was in the pipes, uh, all I know is the story said it was a real oh. mess. So I'm guessing whatever she deposited withdrawed itself oh. back inside of her. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's funny. There's a skit, I think on the Chappelle show where he's taking a shit and he like blows himself off the toilet. And that's all I can think of in my mind when you were describing that. I'm like that poor fucking woman. I'm like, she's like stuck in the fucking ceiling tiles and shit. <laughs> toilet water spraying up her asshole. Like, oh, well, you know, yeah. like the, the, the most magical the place most on magical earth. Place on earth. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and having said all that I want to go to <laughs> we're going this summer okay we we ought to make it a trip all of us oh, we I, do I would whole, totally uh, go Comic Con thing and then I would Cedar totally Point go I love Cedar Point I love roller coasters in general anytime I can get on something that's high and fast sign me up for that shit <laughs> There's no joke there. I already made anyway, it in my head. This is going to be the end. Oh yeah, this is going to be the end of this week's rabbit hole. However, I want to ask a question out to all our Twitter listeners out there. Do you have any theme parks, amusement parks near you? Even if you don't, what was your favorite experience at any theme or amusement park? Please let us know on our official Twitter page, or you can hit me up on a Twitter slash Benoit Gaming because I never use it and I need a reason to do so. Francine. Let's move on. And now back to your regularly scheduled podcast. On Saturday, it will have been 19 years since that fateful day. 
when Fabio murdered a goose with his face. R.I.P. It's that time again for America's number one show, Dumb Shit of the Week. That's right. Dumb Shit of the Week is a show where DJ Melly Mel finds dumb shit and we talk about it. Want your submission on the show? Find us on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks, or you can email us at officialoglfg at gmail.com. Now here's your host, DJ Melly Mel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, everybody. Usually I find Dumb Shit of the Week. As I'm coming to do the show. It just, it takes me that long to find something worth talking about. Not this week, guys. This week, I found three. That's right. Three. Three stories. Three dumb shits. Three dumb shits. (laughs) And I found them on, like, Thursday. Okay. So, this week was scattered with dumb shit. But dumb Oh. Eh. Uh. Anyway. The, <laughs> Not as much right. as that woman at Disney. The first one is going to make you puke. Well, hopefully not because I can't handle people puking, but the thought of it made me want to puke. Okay. So, person films themselves licking airplane toilet seat. What the fuck, man? Uh. <laughs> this is why I do not share it with you because I love your uh. Why? Uh. <laughs> the rest of the title says uh. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the title of the article is Person films themselves licking airplane toilet seat because this is what social media demands. Hashtag I'm- winning. <laughs> I swear. It basically, it says, have you ever wondered what it would take to be a savvy social media user? Does it require some sort of an inherent understanding of people? Willingness to be different? Nah, just film yourself licking a toilet seat. That'll do just fine. And it goes on. There's this girl. She's like, oh, well, I want to be famous. It's always a girl. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's, it's always a girl. Between a dog piss chick. We're and always the- striving for attention. I swear to God, man. Ugh. So okay. I'm going to post my... Can we go back thing. to sniffing condoms again? God <laughs> no, don't damn. do that. Please. Anyway, she posted a video on Twitter where she says, I've licked a lot of toilets in my day, but this is the first one that made my tongue go numb. First of all, don't go around licking public toilets or any toilets for that matter. That's disgusting. And her tongues probably went numb for the 35 million assholes that have sat on this airplane toilet. What? I don't know. Apparently, she thought it was going to make her famous, which it has. She's, yeah, she's yes. Internet, Insta famous, whatever. That bitch got mono. Yeah, I'm just putting she, that out there. She's got something. <laughs> okay. Any Apparently. Is good. Does she have a boyfriend? Because I, I hope she doesn't after this shit. Because it's like, you nasty hoe. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not kissing you no did, more. If she did have a boyfriend, I am assuming that he left her very quickly. And... Since Maybe she posted some weird this shit. a video, uh, I would look out for her face and be like, toilet girl. Oh, It'd be man. right next to the dog piss chick. She's going to get doxxed <laughs> and everybody at her job. She's going to get fired from her job. Yep. And all kind of, like, this nasty trick is out here licking toilet seats. Uh, and we got her as famous. a receptionist at a dentist's office. What kind yep, of fucked up yep, shit? Yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, the second dumb shit is going to make your stomach a little queasy on a different note. God. Uh, people are now getting the inside of their ears removed as a new body modification. It's called the conch removal. Wait, what? Yeah. Wh- they what? are cutting out the yep. inside of their ears. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. So, you know you have the outside part that yes. kind of looks like a question mark. Yes. The part that's just on the inside of that, like, okay, not so, into the ear canal, but in between. Yes. So, okay, to, to kind of give you a visual image or a picture of what, what she's describing... Think of your ear as, like, if it was a donut. Right. And there's just a big hole in the center. Right. Like, like the earlobe and shit is still there. You still have the rim, the outer part of your ear and your lobe. But that part that, that back people part get pierced that you can in touch. here. Yeah, that, what is that, what that, what is that piercing called? The day called? piercing? Yeah. Yeah. 
All that's gone. Yep. Right where <laughs> Dave Piercing would sit. You could literally put your finger through it. What? Ugh. Why anybody would want to do that is beyond me. Um <sighs> They want to get I famous guess. on the internet. And, and it looks like it looks horrible. Disgusting. Like the scarring and shit, like the way it heals around well, yeah, it. Yeah, because you got to get stitches all the way around because that's empty material or empty. I, I, I no, feel like I'll anybody. <laughs> look, because I, I don't even, I mean, and no offense to anybody out here who may be listening who likes has their ears gauged, but I don't even like that. But no, that that is like a whole new, I'd rather you have. Your ears gauged and all kind of crazy piercings than that. Like, that is... <sighs> yeah. Well, yeah. you always know when they're coming, because when they run running towards you, all you hear is this whistling sound from the fucking Ooh, air. Yeah. Oh, God. And what? Why? I, what is happening to... I don't know. People People are into it. Whatever. Whatever works for them. Um, I, I guess. More power to you? But I, not my cup of tea. Looks like something out of a zombie movie. Can we just go back to fuck this con? Can we go? Can, can we start just setting ourselves on fire again? Fuck it. I mean, Indian burning ourselves. God, at least, at least there is the possibility that you're doing the rest of the world a favor and you're taking yourself out for yeah. the rest of us. Because even snorting condoms, I mean, you could choke on that shit. So. <sighs> no, fire, fire is yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> Ben's gonna really get a kick out of this one. Um, I thought of him as soon as I found it and knew that it had to be shared. Okay. Trump hit himself in the head oh, with the yeah. golf club, then <laughs> blames the caddy, and Twitter is losing it. So it's a big story. Oh. A big story that was released, um, I want to say, four days ago. Yep, four days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, two of the most loyal Donald Trump staffers are, well, were his golf caddies. One of them is a 60-something ex-Marine named AJ. The other one's a social media director named Dan. Anyways. It is the former, so we're talking about 60-year-old AJ here, Mm -hmm. who was accused by Donald Trump of hitting the president over the head with his own golf club. The commander and publisher of the commander in Cheat explains how nice i like that nice pun yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) donald trump's fury was fueled after mistakenly accusing his caddy of assault the caddy says i remember a time after a bad drive on the the court mr trump slammed his driver back into the bag as guys do often when they've made a bad putt and he really wasn't watching what he was doing. And the driver ricocheted off the bottom of the bag and hit Mr. Trump in the head. And Trump says, AJ, as he's pissed and red, did you just hit me over the head with the driver? I wish he had a, honestly, I mean, because in my mind, I'm just picturing, like, what did he think happened? Like, he just pulled out the fucking golf club and just yeah, he go- fucking he just go went over his head with the shit. This poor guy who's worked with him forever. He's I like, thought that he was one of my most loyal people, <laughs> and he attacked me with the driver. My own golf club. I'm going to take him to court, to the Supreme Court, <laughs> and we're going to sue him, and it's going to be huge. <laughs> it doesn't even matter, because Trump's the kind of guy that if he did hit himself in the head and knew he did it, right, right. still blame there him. There was no collusion between me and the bag. <laughs> No, actually, it's funny you bring this up because this was initially. I knew it. I knew you saw it. Oh god. Yep. Yep. That that that's 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 gold. That's gold. It's almost. We're gonna build a wall around that club. I would say that's. (laughs) They're bringing in rapists (laughs) and drugs. Daily Show um, host who was laughing at the news report that said Tijuana is people in Tijuana are stealing the barbed wire and parts of the wall for their own personal security. Oh yeah, yeah, shit. He's so, like, oh, that is hilarious. Yep, I I figured I would share those yeah. those dumb shits with you. So let let's recap. We have holes in our ears that shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. We have people licking toilets, mm-hmm. and then we have presidents hitting themselves in the head with golf clubs. I would say that this was a good week for dumb shit. If you know anybody? How how have we come to this? I don't know. I like, don't know. like, I, I, I didn't even like Bush, but Bush would never even do some <laughs> shit. Like, I mean, Bush did almost choke to death on a pretzel, but I that's mean, true. hey, we've all almost choked to death eating something. But. Yeah, that's true. 
Well, his father like puked on the Chinese president. Yeah, that was funny too. I've seen that video clip. Yeah. Now I'll give Trump some credit. He's really not that bad of a golfer when you factor in that his. (laughs) (laughs) Nice, nice. Yeah, I don't know much about golf, but I have seen people like slam their clubs into their bag, so I can totally see this happening. Like he's all pissed off that it didn't. I believed he put a trampoline in the bottom of the bag <laughs> so it would hit me when I did it. I'm going to have my attorney general. <laughs> Obama, release your scorecard. Right, 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 oh my right. Oh, God. Right. Oh, my God. I want to see this caddy's birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, so great week for dumb shit. Um, not such a good week for humanity. <laughs> I, I weep. Mm-hmm. Um. If anybody has any, con, you know, questions about how my dumb shit process works, even though I just explained it, but whatever, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Froggy Beaver. You can send the show an email at officialoglfg.gmail.com. And yeah, so that's my dumb shit for this week. Stay <laughs> smart, kids. <laughs> nice. So apparently Toilet Seat Girl is a self-proclaimed sex worker. She has a lot of nudes on her Twitter and she is looking for donations on Cash App. She also has a not safe for work Snapchat. Yeah, we can go ahead and delete the internet now. Some people have been kind of upset and other people have been very happy about the fact that the Disney Fox acquisition has finally been completed. Mm -hmm. Um, It is official as of Wednesday that Disney now officially owns Fox and all the intellectual properties that were under the Fox. Does that mean we're getting the X-Men in the MCU? See now, that's the thing that people are happy about, and and, no, and some people are mad about the that. Bundies in the MC. Right, right, right. The Simpsons uh... are joining the Avengers. No, hey, hey, you know we can maybe get that um fucking uh uh Deadpool Simpsons crossover, Family Guy crossover, something like that. I don't make that face. I'll pass. <laughs> so um just just to kind of give you like some of the official information behind this. It's it's it, it's a mixed bag for sure. So we do we have Spider Man now though completely right? No, no Spider Man Sony. Sony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. gonna bite them next. You just give it time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disney will own PlayStation and everything. Uh, I'm else. jumping the gun. <laughs> so I'm getting this from the CornellSun.com. Says last Wednesday, the long anticipated Disney Fox merger was officially complete. The $71.3 billion purchase is one of the largest corporate consolidations in the entertainment industry. Given Disney control of over 35% share of the entertainment movie market and is undoubtedly going to reshape the future of Hollywood. (gasps) Almost immediately, Disney added to its corporate website homepage several notable Fox properties, including The Simpsons, The Shape of Water, and Deadpool. They're placed next to works from Marvel, Pixar, and Lucasfilm. Showed off as the newly gained territories of Disney, of Disney's already massive media empire. You're going to have Deadpool show up at Disney World. But that's not why I went, <gasps> Oh, yeah, no, that, that's oh, definitely not happening. Okay, so, <laughs> Disney now owns Gotham. No. No. Fox airs Gotham, but Gotham is owned by Warner Brothers. Okay. Yes. We're good. Yes, yes. No. We're good. Warner Brothers doesn't have a channel. Right, so, right. Yeah, yeah. So they I, gotta, I was oh. just thinking yeah. if they owned Gotham, then they kind of own a, a section of the DC. Would, that, that would just be insult to injury for DC fans. If yeah. Disney bought DC, that would just be – I think they would literally kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> well, despite the fact that – you know, Fox produces its own series for, like, the Fox networks. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, television shows that get produced get aired on other stations and networks. Oh, yeah. So despite the fact that it might be a Fox, um, well, Disney might now own, um, or, Disney, yeah. 
Disney I'm, now owns Fox. Yeah. No, I was going to say I'm trying to eat stuff here in my mind, stinking food. Anyway, um, despite the fact they now will own some Fox properties, does not necessarily mean that they won't still air them on different networks or work with other. Oh students. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, as <laughs> as 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 this is going on though, I think Disney is starting to try to move a lot more stuff in house and consolidate their stuff because they're going to have their streaming platform here soon and they already have, you know, ABC and shit like that now that they own Fox too. Now they did not get Fox News or I think Fox Sports is still a separate thing from uh this merger, but as far as like the intellectual properties and movie side and TV side, yeah, they got all that shit. So well, they they would never get Fox News just because um Rupert Murdoch would never allow the same company that owns ABC to also own his. Right, right, right. I mean, and that's honestly kind of like the direction Fox is going is like they're they're focusing more on their new stuff than really anything else. Uh, Fox Studios makes money. Like, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, pe- we make fun of the X-Men movies and shit like that, but they make fucking money. So. Oh, and I, I still love all of them. Yeah, I, I don't know about all okay. of them. Okay. <laughs> I love them. I just want them to be with the yeah, MCU. Yeah, no, no. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. Especially with the Dark Phoenix shit. Yeah. It, but it made a trailer in the movies. It's official now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. It's it's they're gonna I mean, they keep threatening us with it, so it's coming. <laughs> but it is has been said that there will be anywhere from four thousand to ten thousand employees who will lose their jobs mm-hmm. because of this merger. Because now that Disney's taken over they're kind of just going to clean house. And a lot of it's going to be on the movie side because of a lot of redundancies because they already have their head of whatever, you know, for Disney films and head of this, that, and the other. So they're going to be probably wiping a lot of the people from the film side. Now from the TV side, there are going to be a bunch of layoffs and have been as the merger happened. But a lot of these people on the TV side are probably going to be safe. You know, there may be a few that get kicked out here and there, but... The movie division is where they're going to see the biggest, of course, you know, of like course. loss of employees. And 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 I will say right off the bat, like, because I, I did talk to somebody about this on Twitter, and I I do feel bad for these people because I'm never happy to see anybody lose their job for you know any kind of my own selfish geeky you know right, right. like um, wishes to see Fantastic Four and X Men and shit in MCU like that's cool and all. I don't want to see 10,000 people or more lose their jobs because right. of that. That being said, though, I think people are unjustly angry at Disney mm-hmm. because Comcast was trying to buy Fox as well. So if Disney didn't do this, Comcast, Comcast was going to do it. Sure. Like Fox was selling. It's not like Disney came in and like it was a corporate takeover or some shit. They were selling the company. So if Disney didn't buy them, somebody else would. And these layoffs would happen no matter what. Right. So I can... Understand if you're just mad because these people lost their job, but don't be necessarily mad at Disney because it's not like they came in and stole these people's jobs from them. The company was being sold. They knew that this was going to happen. So if Disney didn't buy them, it was going to be Comcast or Time Warner or somebody was going to buy them out. So that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles as far as that goes. So, I mean, that sucks, but that that's capitalism. That's business. That's That's how it goes. But... Other than that, I wanted to know, now that they can legally start the conversations of, okay, how can we incorporate these characters into the current MCU, how do you think they're going to bring the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and like people like Galactus and all that other kind of shit like into the MCU now? I don't know. Especially with the big hype about Endgame. It's, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, it's all going to be dictated off of how this next Avengers movie ends. Mm-hmm. will dictate how Phase 4 turns out and how we're going to start bringing these people in. Because like I said, one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to is Black Panther 2. Because now that we got X-Men, they might introduce Storm in Black Panther 2. Because in the comics, they get married. That and that would be dope. That would be a good segue. We can bring Halle into... Berry back. No, okay, we're not bringing Halle Berry back. But... Hey, I mean she is looking pretty hot she though. Got that short yeah. gray, yeah. white pixie cut. Mm, I I yeah. do like the chick they got playing Storm right now though. I I, I think she's. A good I like Storm. her. I liked her more in Apocalypse. Yes. Okay. As opposed to the 
Dark Phoenix. Yes. Yeah. Well, we 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 haven't even seen it yet. No, so we don't know. I, I've seen her in. No, she's only been in the two. She's so just far. been in the one. Yep. Yep. They introduce her in Apocalypse. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like her in Apocalypse. I don't particularly like what I'm seeing for her in Dark Phoenix. Fair. Let's go with that. Okay. Fair. Fair. I, I don't know. I A lot of theories are going around for Endgame that there's going to be time travel or some such shit to try to undo what Thanos did. Multiple, you know, alternate dimensions and all this shit. Like, I, I they, feel like... I know, but there's a lot of speculation that... The, Chris Hemsworth, he said he's done. Yeah, and Chris Evans, or Robert Downey Jr. Order contracts are supposed to be up. You know, yeah, they're know. all they're all done. They've been doing this for ten years. Yeah, which would make sense. This would be the best time to bring in these other characters because we're losing. Second. Yeah, we're losing our um, flagship. You know, characters like you know Iron Man. You know, say what you will about Tony Stark, but he like is the Man. you know the most iconic of all the characters in well, the MCU. Sure. So. When you lose him, it's like, well, how do you replace him? Wolverine or somebody right. like that. Right. Like, that's going to be. That's going to be tough, too, because they're going to have to recast Wolverine. Yeah, but I mean, look, man, Hugh Jackman, he was great, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Like, like they you can get someone somebody with else. a little yeah. more beef to him. Yeah, because, I mean, everybody liked Christian Bale as Batman, but then they brought in Ben Affleck and they got over that real quick. So it's like, whatever. And now we're going to have to get over Ben Affleck because we're getting a new Batman. So. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, so it, it, it is what your it is. your first statement. I couldn't agree with, but <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, the the Ben Affleck thing, I'm good with. So yeah, maybe. I mean, I think as long as the does whoever they find does the role justice, I think yeah. we'll be all right. I guess the real question is still, how is Deadpool gonna fit into this shit? Because we talked about this months ago, but. The Disney has promised, and like I said, they even put a picture of him up on their their website and shit, like you Isn't- know showcasing like hey we're still committed to making deadpool movies like we're not just gonna act like he don't exist it's really weird though because deadpool's like in between yeah but i i just don't think they're ever gonna bring him into the mcu per se like i think he- they're still gonna kind of like they did with him in x-men movies like we're gonna acknowledge the fact that he is in the universe but you he will never be in an avengers movie he will right. never be or if they do they're gonna have to tone him way way down I wonder, well maybe they could put him in an x-men movie if they start making x-men movies r-rated nah disney ain't gonna do that disney's it not would be gonna nice do. though even though they're disney it would be nice if he only makes like a little cameo because like we've mentioned before they can get one or two fucks in before you have to go r that is true Just bring him in a cameo where all he goes is here are the two fucks you're right. Like, I, I don't give two fucks. That's all it is. Pay Ryan I, Reynolds 500000 There you go. I, I, you know, and, and, and it's funny, too, because maybe what they'll do, because in the comics they have this thing called Marvel Knights, mm-hmm. where it's kind of like the more darker comic stories that aren't necessarily in the main comics. Disney After Dark. Right, right, exactly. Maybe they'll have a little studio dedicated to making these darker, R-rated, you know, movies. Maybe. And then that way you can still... Not have to quote unquote water Deadpool down, right? But you know, at the same time, you don't have to quote unquote taint, you know, the family image of the Avengers movies and all that kind of shit. Because I mean, yeah, there's action and people die and shit like that, but you know, nobody's in there making fucking basic instinct, you know, baby dick jokes and shit like that. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I will be very interested to see what they do, to how, how Kevin Feige is going to juggle all this. Because right. he's, he's the, the, the driving force behind all these movies, so it's like he's going to be the one to make these decisions. So I'm like, how are you going to play this hand? Because I'm really interested to see how this goes. But yeah, RIP to the people who lost their jobs. I mean, I'm sure eventually they will find something else. And it's like, hell, maybe they even get hired by Disney for a different position or something. But... Right. Start pleading your cases now. Right, right. But but it's like, I get it. It's like, you know, we, we work in retail. Well, not you, but you have. I have, yeah. And, and it would be like if they close another store, you know. Yeah. And it's like if they brought the staff over there, you're not going to have two store managers. You're not going to have two assistant managers. Like, somebody's got to go. Fight it out Wakanda style. Right, yeah. It'll be like in the dark night. You, you break a pull stick in half and throw it out there and whoever doesn't die there you go i don't get that reference the, the joker he does the thing when oh he's recruiting people. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah he breaks the pool stick oh i know you don't like the movie but god damn i'm yeah, like that part yeah, was yeah, cool. i got it i sidebar sure i was watching i was feeling real nostalgic when i got back from work this weekend sure and uh Brittany was at work and tyler was on tennis and I had the house to myself. Mm-hmm. I watched 89 Batman. And then I turned around and watched Batman Forever. 
Fucking Joel Shoemaker made forever. Yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. No. He made everything after Batman Returns and before Batman Begins. Those two movies are Joel Schumacher's. Forever yeah. and Batman and Robin are his. Yeah, I didn't know that. When he has bat well, nipples in both movies, yeah, but when that I, was a dead giveaway right there. <laughs> when I watched them previously, I didn't really pay attention to the credits. Mm-hmm. Like, the opening credits and shit, I didn't care. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know who Joel Schumacher was. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I wouldn't have made the connection. Oh, yeah. But we talk about him so much on the show... It flashed on the screen, and I was like, this motherfucker here. Mm-hmm, yep. He is the originator of the Bat Nipples uh-huh. and all the other weird shit that they did in those two movies. Which, that movie was really, really weird. Yeah. 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 Anyway. anyway sidebar over. All right. Moving on. 10,000 people gone. Sounds like we're still feeling the effects of Thanos' snap. Am I right? This sarcastic sidebar was brought to you by the fine folks at Disney. So, some video game news, and it's it, it's it's a little bit more than video game because it's this one, this one is going to. I know sometimes I can be hyperbolic when I make some statements about certain things, but this this is going to legit change the entire gaming landscape and kind of like entertainment landscape as we know it. So, um, the other day, Google. At, uh, uh, what is it called? The GDC, uh, Game Developers Conference. They announced Google Stadia. Or Stadia. I think it's Stadia. I, I'm not 100% I'm sure. I'm going to say Stadia. Okay, okay. Um, now, I'm getting this from Polygon.com. Uh, they said, Google's hour-long pitch for cloud gaming at the 2019 Game Developers Conference marked the company's intention to reform and dominate the games industry. Google Stadia, if it works as advertised, is nothing less than a sweeping away of the status quo, an end to console boxes and the technological generations that have shaped the last 40 years. They go on to say that Stadia promises massive changes to how games are played, bought, shared, and developed. It solves entrenched technology problems such as split-screen play and platform agnostic sharing of game sessions. It expands the reach of YouTube live streamers, enriching enriching Google's own ecosystems, while turning the entire internet into a video game store. There is much that remains unanswered. What is Google's business model for Stadia? What games will be available when it launches? Will Google's vaunted cloud infrastructure really be able to deliver instant, perfectly presented games in up to 4K quality at 60 frames per second? Um, they go on a little bit later in the article and they talk about, um, what all this kind of means in practice, um, is basically that I can click on any link, including a YouTube video link and be playing any video game, no matter how visually intense within five seconds, I can play my crap on my crappy old laptop, my clunky old PC, my cell phone, my tablet, or my internet connected TV. I can jump between multiple devices where my progress will always be saved. There is no hardware except an optional controller that connects directly to the servers rather than any particular device over Wi-Fi. So picture, if you will, you're at home one day and a new, uh, I don't know, we'll say the new Call of Duty game just came out. You are watching a YouTube video, the ad comes up, and you're like, oh shit, I like that. And right in the little corner... Maybe instead of saying um, skip ad, it could say play now. You click that, you're playing the game. Like, it, that quickly. There is no downloads. There is no, you know, purchasing over the store. It would be, now they haven't completely explained how it's going to work, but. That would be pretty dope. I'm going to assume it's going to be some kind of subscription service, kind of like a Netflix or something like mm-hmm. that. Where instead of buying a, a game, you just pay a monthly fee and you have access to whatever titles they have during that time. And then it just goes from there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cool stuff to this. But I know, because having conversations about, about this with Benoit, I know he's going to be probably a bit more resistant to this than maybe some other people will be. Mm-hmm. But the, 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 the thing is, if this works, this will revolutionize the way we play games. Like, this is, like, unprecedented. The problem is, is that 
games will be lost to history. And I know me and Benoit, we talked about this and it's, it, the problem is, is that the games will, it, it, it's kind of like Netflix. They'll have a movie up. You can watch it while, while it's on Netflix, but when it's mm-hmm. off Netflix, it's gone. Right. Now, right now, you can still go buy the DVD, or you may already own it. Sure. It may come on TV. With this, it's like, let's just say that there's an indie developer that puts out a game. They don't make physical copies. They don't whatever. Or if it's a proprietary Google game, mm-hmm. and it's something they develop. Once they take it off of Stadia, you can't play it anymore. No. Oh. It's just gone forever. And that's kind of my problem with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't like that. No. Like, I like the initial... Instant access. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because that's pretty cool, you know. But even if, even if it's something like a Netflix subscription, not everybody can afford Netflix, right? So not everybody's going to be able to afford this, you know, whether whether they charge five, ten, fifteen dollars, whatever they charge. Sure. Not everybody's going to be able to afford the subscription. So you're going to release these games that are only available for a short time mm-hmm. that not everybody can play. Anyways, mm-hmm. and with there no being no physical copy, then you get an entire subsection of people that have never played your game. Right, and that can't play That your can't game. play your game, you know, unless they have a friend that has it. Now, Benoit, what what are your feelings about this? Because I, I, I'm really interested to hear your perspective on this. As it comes down to tangible formats for gaming... There are going to be some people that already argue, hey, on Steam, you already have that issue, which, yeah, we do, and I don't like that. But there's a couple other issues at hand. One, everything is going to be played through, what, Chrome? Some kind of Google software that you said in the article you can play it on a crappy laptop. Mm -hmm. So what, your your graphics cards, your GPUs, they're not going to matter in this case? Yeah. Uh, is, it, it gonna, is it so, going to render upgrading uh, PCs irrelevant? Eventually, not right away, but like... Sure, eventually. yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, maybe not right out the gate, but yeah. I think that's where they're going. Two, higher-end games that run at a higher frame rate and have much rougher graphics. Uh, what is that going to mean for people who live in certain areas of the country with slower internet speeds? Uh-huh. How is latency going to handle that? I mean, if you're playing something with a controller, a little bit of latency is not going to be that big of an issue. But if you're typically a PC gamer with a mouse and keyboard, you're going to notice that shit. Especially if you play, like, uh, online shooters, multiplayer, yes. Call of Duty, uh, PUBG, things like that. That's, that, that, that's, that's I think, a lot of people's big question. Especially, like, if you're an eSports gamer. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, if you play competitively and shit for, like, money and shit. Oh, yeah. Lag will make or break a match, like immediately and now now google says and and i'm glad you brought that point up too ben because google says that oh it's only going to take they were streaming 4k with like 20 megabits per second or whatever because of all the infrastructure they already have built up and stuff that might be true for the united states yeah but but places like for example australia they have really shoddy internet over there and true yeah, that's True for the fucking U.S. Come on, there's plenty of people who live in areas of the U.S. right now where one ISP has a control hold on it with bo- broadband. Like that's, that's true. Charter, that's true. Spectrum, whatever you want to call it. That's true. What the that's fuck true. are they going to be able to do for me? Yeah, and from state to state, it varies. There's some states like if you go to California, their internet is like, mwah. I'm, I'm like, but then you Montana, can go to like, yeah, there's yeah. There's nothing in Montana. Exactly. Like you don't even get cell service in Montana. Exactly. Trust me, I just drove through there. <laughs> I know. Like, and it's, and it's all safe data going to be stored in a cloud. What happens if that system goes down? Are there going to be backups? Exactly. exactly. Are we going to be able to store information on, be it TV, console, whatever, while we're playing this game through? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Now, now a lot of the problems that that I think some people are bringing up are are going to be things that are going to happen in the future it's not going to be anything we have to worry about today it'll be like stuff about like no longer owning a game yes granted with this service that may be an issue but they're not going to stop making physical copies of games right but eventually and it's happening right now people are less and less buying physical copies of games oh i know most people just buy the shit off the xbox store the playstation store or whatever well, it happened Steam. with movies yeah 
they they've been phasing out movies for a long time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know the local video stores are closing mm-hmm. and, and or are closed. Right. Uh, nobody buys DVDs anymore. Right. Well, that's why you can get them so cheap. Mm-hmm. It's like CDs. Yeah. Nobody buys CDs anymore exactly. except for my brother. Exactly. But I mean, yeah, no, no you're absolutely right. I mean, it, why, I mean, it makes. It makes sense from a standpoint that they would do it with video games. Right. But I don't necessarily like that they're doing that with video games. Yeah, no, I agree. No, 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 to play devil's advocate. On the plus side, technology-wise, this is a good thing. Because now I can theoretically start playing games with people on different platforms. Mm -hmm. So, say, if you got an Xbox and i got a PlayStation... That won't matter anymore. Right. You know, it won't be a thing of, oh, we can't play together because I got to go buy this other $300, $400 console to play with you. It's like, hey, we're all playing on the cloud. We just jump in the same server together. Boom. There you go. I don't know. But then again, you're assuming certain games are going to be made cross-platform because this is not going to knock Sony or Microsoft or even Nintendo out of the realm anytime soon. So if you're playing, so say you got Fortnite, which is cross-platform. Sure. uh, Say another game comes out. Are you, if the game comes out on a hard disk for PS12, whatever the fuck it's called then, and the game's out for the Chrome, are you going to be able to play with somebody from each platform? Like, will it be cross-platform? You should be as long as you're not playing on the platform. So if you go straight through Stadia, you should be able to play with whoever. Now, if somebody is playing... Now, if it's a game that's proprietary to Xbox or PlayStation and they will not share it with Stadia, yeah, you will still have that problem. But... If it's on Stadia, you should be able to play it with anybody else that's on Stadia because now you're on their service. Like the whole proprietary, you know, systems, all that won't matter at that point. But that's only if these companies agree (laughs) to get on there because this was kind of like Google's pitch to the game companies and say like, hey, get on board. We don't know what Microsoft's answer is going to be to this yet, nor Sony's or anybody else's or Nintendo for that matter. Nintendo's notorious for not, you know, wanting to play along with others. So Nintendo shares nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, you want access to... Nah. And they say, fuck that shit. You can't even play... They say, yeah, we'll let Sonic come over here, but... Sure. <laughs> I mean, there's even a lot of Nintendo... Like, Mario, you have, you try to play Mario online. Oh, yeah, no. And it's... Hell no. It's weird and grainy, and it's got, like... No, it, it, it took a mod, somebody independent from Nintendo to do that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah no. you, you can't find Mario online. But but go ahead, Ben. You, you were going to make another point? Back to this, yes. We're only talking about this currently in, in a North American or U.S. standpoint. What about what's going on over in Europe right now with what we talked about last year? You know, Article 13, all that stuff, because that's going to be coming to a vote pretty soon. And we have no net neutrality here. So with all the infrastructure they're going to have to make and produce to make all this even possible for people to play on their service, what about the people who are already tied in with contracts? Are other ISPs simply going to go along with this? That That's the thing. It's it's going to be... Are they going to cap our usage? Yeah, it's, it's going to be... Now, and, and, and I, I only hit like the main points of that article because they do go on to bring up you know, uh, data caps and stuff like that. And from at least the way Google says it's going to work, it shouldn't take no more than like 20, 30 minute megabits per second speeds <clears throat> to stream 4K, 60 frames per second. It's arguable if that's true. And they, they talk about their latency shouldn't be that bad. It's, again, arguable if that's going to be true. We won't know until we actually see it rolled out. But I, I, I don't know. They... They're they're never going to come out and say, oh, yeah, there's going to be all kind of limitations to this shit and everything else. Like, they're going to make it sound like it's the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. But uh, it still remains to be seen. Right. But my my, my biggest fear, though, and, you know, Benoit, I know you spend a decent amount of time on the Internet. And, I mean, I know you do, too, as well. Oh, yeah. Not maybe in the same circles that we might, but still. Google (laughs) is notorious for abandoning projects. Oh, yeah. Like, they just got rid of Google Plus not that long ago. Um, Google Duo was a thing, and I think they're going to do away with that soon. They have started and stopped so much shit over time. Like, the the uh, YouTube gaming thing, that was, like, its own channel and shit now. They've just kind of lumped it in with the main homepage. Like, it's... 
they okay. Uh, remember when they started rolling out the uh, what was it the the Google Internet? Uh, what was it called? Uh, Benoit, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, was it the fiber wire? Fiber, yeah, it's Google yeah, fiber. Google Fiber. Thank you. They were rolling that out, and you know it was going to. Now be... that is that is available in some places. Yeah, in yeah, some places, ridiculous internet speeds. Yeah, now. in some places, but they, they were doing it in I think Louisville, Kentucky, mm-hmm. and they they got the city to pass all these ordinances to let them you know tear up a bunch of shit and do it. And their solution, instead of making a bunch of power lines and stuff and hooking them up to that, they were digging little terraces and mm-hmm. tunnels in the streets to run the wire and just covering it up. You know, with cement and shit like sure. that. Well, they tore up half the fucking city, did a bunch of shit, but then realized halfway through how much time, effort, and money was going to take to do this. Like, they underestimated the amount of work that was going to take, and they abandoned the project. So these people had to let all this shit pass, give them, I'm sure, tax incentives and all this shit to come there, tear up half the fucking streets in the city, and then they just said, Oh, well, we're not going to do this now, sorry. And just throw some asphalt over that shit and call it good. Mm. Now we're pulling all our money out. And it's like, people were pissed off, are still pissed off about that shit. So it's like, Google, anytime they start something, they're always trying to, like, revolutionize the world. And then it's like, they realize, oh, shit, this is costing us way more money than what we thought it was going to. We're not doing this no more. And then you're just left to pick up the pieces. It's because you got a bunch of millennials that are great thinkers, but not necessarily good at the the, follow-through. The follow-through with... And and so and we all know that Google employs. You're a millennial, all right. You, you yeah, put yeah. in the door there. And, and, or 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 for another example, uh, Google uh, Google Glass. Like when they had the fucking glasses where it would like take pictures and video and all that shit. That was a thing for like a month, and then they just did away with that shit. So I must have missed that one. Yeah, it, it was that quick that it came and gone. So I mean, I don't know. Like I I can see the potential of how this could be awesome because, like I said. To just be able to sit and be watching your TV and see an ad for a game and just say, I want to play that. And be able to pick up your little Stadia controller, click it, and then be playing it. That's dope. That's cool. But, in theory. Yeah, there I can still see a lot of limitations that that's going to cause. And like I said earlier, there's going to be games that are just going to be lost to history. Because once they're off of Stadia, and once we finally do phase out of consoles altogether and phase out of physical disc and all that kind of shit... It's you're just leasing a game like you don't own the game. You just are renting it. It's basically Redbox. Pretty much. Yeah. But even with Redbox, you can buy some of that shit or like like even video stores. Yes. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But even with those services, I think you still have the option to buy it with this. Unless they change it over time, there is no system. There is no hardware. So even if you wanted to buy the game, what would you even save it to? Yeah. You know, do you don't you right, it's like you don't have a, a Xbox or a PlayStation to put it on, so it's like even if you wanted to buy it, how do you keep it? So I'm I'm really interested to see mainly how they roll this out, but more specifically how the other game companies react to this. Cuz like I said, we still haven't heard nothing from Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft, so that's going to be kind of what dictates how this all goes down. Because don't get me wrong, game companies, they make a lot of their money off of their IPs, mm-hmm. like the actual games, but systems bring in a good chunk of money. Well, so, yeah. And, and, and getting someone and tied to a system makes them loyal to you and your company, especially if you if you make a lot of exclusives for mm-hmm. your system. Ask so, me how many Nintendo systems I have at the house. Exactly, exactly. So it's like, Three. so <laughs> if that goes out the window, it's like, well, now you're at the behest of Google and it's like, well, can we put our thing on your platform and just hope people play it? You know, there's no brand loyalty at that point. Say, that's another thing is not everybody plays online multiplayer games. Yeah. Like me, I, I'm not an online multiplayer game. Sure. I'm not a, it just, it's not my cup of tea. Sure. I'd... Well, there will be some single player. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there'll sure. still be your God of Wars well, and yeah, but shit I like mean, that. Yeah. Even most of that is not appealing to me. Sure. And I can't be the only one. No, 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 not at all. And like I said, I do believe indie games will get on there, but indie games specifically, 
like, you know, more like platformer mm-hmm. games and puzzles and shit like that. Those are the ones I'm worried about because they're never going to be able to make physical copies of that shit right. and put it in stores. So it's like when those are gone, those are just gone. Unless so, you can find a way to save them on like a flash drive or, or something. A, yeah. But then, then you go into like all this coding and how you... Right, right. And it's like, and even then it's like, even if you'd have it saved, how do you play it? Because if you don't have a system right. and it's say if you don't want to keep paying for the subscription service, it's like, well, how do you even get access to it at that right. point? So it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to keep following this and I'm, um, it's supposed to be coming out later this year. So we'll, we'll see what happens because it, it's going to be interesting for sure. All right. Moving on. It's okay, don't worry. This is all a part of Google's plan to be dominant in every arena. If they can't be the behemoth, then they'll just scrap the project and poof, no more video game industry. I'm sure it'll be fine. Do 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 um, so kitties, we are doing, I gotta stop saying that shit. It sounds so pedophilish when I say kitties. I gotta stop doing that. Uh, anyway, we are, Be calling, calling, right. Calling. We are doing our review for Jordan Peele's newest movie, Us. And this is going to be a mullet style review. Uh, the movie just came out, uh, over the weekend. So I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So if you're not sure what a mullet review is, it is going to be non-spoilers in the front and spoilers at the back. There will be a clear point. We go into spoiler territory, so don't worry. You will not be surprised and hear anything that you don't want to unless you're just not paying attention. But that being said, stay for the review all the way to the end if you have seen the movie because we're going to talk about some theories and different plot points that we really need to get out in the open here because I, I have questions. And if you haven't seen the movie... Don't listen to the end. If you don't give a shit about spoilers, though, go right ahead. But you have been warned, so don't say I didn't tell you. Now, that being said, um, I, I wanted to do not like a flashback per se, but I wanted to revisit when we talked about the trailer to this movie. Okay. Because remember, we had the conversation with the three of us where we talked about Get Out. Yes. And we talked about the different metaphors and messages that he had in that movie. And we were theorizing what maybe some of the stuff in this movie meant. And I want to say right off the bat, I was totally way off. I was way, 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 way off at the time. I made the statement that I thought that maybe it would have something to do with race relations between how African-Americans are, portrayed in the media and seen by other races but how we are in our normal lives because the family was just kind of this normal you know milk toast run of the mill like hey we're just people right but then their doubles were like this like vicious crazy breaking into your house like animalistic kind of things none of that had to do nothing with anything that was totally no no see i told you you thought too much into it yeah, into that get out though definitely no, no, has no. those I'm themes. I'm talking about us. But yeah, us. Yeah. Now it does have themes that we we'll get to, but not the ones that I thought it was yeah, going to be about. Yeah, you you went way off with yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. I you did. Meant, like you made me question get out, and I wanted to go back. Did not have not had the chance. Definitely yet. go back and watch get out. But I mean, I wanted to go back and watch get out just to focus on it mm-hmm. and see what else I could pick up on. Oh, one of my favorite lines is the dad where he's like, you know, I voted for Obama both times. And it's like, 
who who just brings that up in a conversation? It's like, well, if that was another white person there, would you say some shit like that? Like, uh, anyway. White people do. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Like, in Get Out, or in uh, Us, I was definitely looking for, like, you know in Get Out, the the plot twist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was looking for that in Us. Like, I was looking at all the shit in the back. And sure. And I was, I was paying real close attention. And what happened as a plot twist was not what I was expecting. There's and, and we'll get there. We'll get there. But 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 first and foremost, um, I want to say Jordan Peele is proving that he has a very unique vision, and I think in time he will be remembered as like one of the visionary directors in the horror slash like thriller genre. Oh sure, because love it, the movie or hate it, he comes at these things with a unique perspective that I have not seen mm -hmm. from most other directors and stuff. Like, I would say Team Money compared him to Stephen King. He said kinda, he, is, he is kinda. today's Stephen King. Yeah, because there was a time before he started fucking up where I would have compared him to M. Night Shyamalan back when he was doing, you know, like Signs mm -hmm. and uh, The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable and shit like that, like when he was at his prime. Sure. He... he has a a very good eye for camera angles, and he knows how to build tension. Mm -hmm. Because one of the, my favorite things about this movie is I always felt like something was like... I don't want to use the cliche edge of my seat, per se, mm -hmm. but I always felt like, okay, every time they were just having just normal conversations, I'm like, okay, something's not right. Right. Even at the very beginning of the movie... When they're at the the fair, mm -hmm. when when it has the the, the flashback to the eighties, mm -hmm. I'm like, everything just felt really uncomfortable, and it was supposed to be like this. Hey, you know, we're out having fun with our little girl, and you know, we playing carnival games and shit like that. But I just felt uneasy mm -hmm. the entire time. I'm like, just this whole scenario just feels weird. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and you just saw just people just you know eating hot dogs and riding roller coasters and just playing around and shit, but. It was just this uneasy like feeling the whole time. Yep. And, and when they're at the beach, the same thing as a family. I just felt uneasy the whole time. I want to say Lupita Nyong'o, who is our star of the movie. If, if nobody caught this, uh, Lupita Nyong'o, who plays uh, Adelaide, the, the mother of the family, mm -hmm. and Winston Duke, who plays Gabe, the father... They are both in Black Panther. I just yes, want to put that are. out there. Uh, um, he plays M'Baku, and she is um, T'Challa's love interest in Black Panther. And somebody made the joke somewhere online where after T'Challa got dusted, M'Baku came and stole his girl. <laughs> 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 and I was like, nice, nice. Awesome. I was like, nice. But uh, so this is definitely her movie. Oh, like, yeah. like it, it's an ensemble cast to a degree. But I think that she is the star of the movie, hands down. And she gave a really stellar performance. Like, yes, she really did. In both roles. Yes. Not just as Adelaide, but as her double. Yes. I was quite impressed by her American accent because she has, uh, I want to say more of like a British-esque mm -hmm. accent. But her American accent was really good. Like, I bought it the whole time. Um Winston Duke, not so much. His accent kind of was weird to me. I don't know if he speaks. I, th I thought it was just supposed to be because he was a weird dude. I guess because there, there's some moments where he's talking and I'm just like, I hear some M'Baku in there a little bit, but... He forgot I, which role he was playing. I know. I'm like, did you? are you confused what set you on right now? But but no, but her, but her performance as... Um, uh, I got the name here of what her double's name is. Uh, Red. Red. Yeah, thank you, Red. I was shocked. Like, like I did not, especially when you first hear her speak for the first time. Mm -hmm. I was like, ooh, like, okay, that is not what I was expecting from this at all. So she, she, hats off to Lapita. Good job. Like, this is definitely her movie. What did you guys think about the rest of the characters? Like, like the, the family in general. I really wanted the white guy to get punched. The white Oh, um, Tim Heidecker? Uh-huh. Tim And Heidecker. I really, really wanted his wife to get punched. I, I, I thought they were okay. Like, I don't know. But I, I mean, specifically, her family. Oh, her family. Her family was good. I think. <laughs> I mean, 
I, I remember sitting through this movie and I was very, like, waiting for something to happen and paying attention and then I was, like, my, my sister-in-law said mind fucked at the end of it. And oh, yeah, for sure. That's really a good term for it. You're like, what? Ew. Yeah. No, no, no. What, what, what about you, Benoit? What, what did you think about the supporting characters, I guess? They, I think they played their roles well. Without getting into spoiler territory, they played what seemed to me like uh, I took. I think it took take place in the West Coast. Uh, Coast. yeah. Well, yeah, they're on a beach, so maybe somewhere. I I think it was the. I honestly think it was East Coast. They they came across to me like your typical like middle class. It's funny. It's funny because uh, the two main characters, the mother or the the mother and the father, were both in Black Panther. But in this film, they came across as if they were just standard middle American white suburban family, like very just bland suburban family. That was actually one of the things I liked about this is that they make jokes about race and stuff in the movie. But this could have been a Hispanic family, a white family, mm, Asian white, family. Yeah. There was nothing besides the whole "I got five on it" bit. There was nothing about them and a couple jokes about white people that they make in the movie that was just like, this is a black, quote-unquote, family. Right. You know what I mean? It, I, the best analogy I could come up with is, like, imagine the family was the band Hootie and the Blowfish. That's <laughs> yes. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves yeah, especially Yeah, especially the dad. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the dad is Darius. Yeah, oh, God damn, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like the family. Um, I, I thought that they had a good dynamic. Like, everybody felt like real people. Mm-hmm. I like the relationships that she had with the son and the daughter and shit like that. Because the daughter, she felt, in the beginning, I didn't care for her because she kind of felt a little bit typical teenage. Like, oh, my God. And, like, I'm on my phone all the time and all that kind of shit. But I, I she grew on me as the movie went on. Like, especially about midway through mm-hmm. when she kind of takes a more um assertive role throughout the movie and i was like oh she out here getting shit done i was like i like the daughter like she ain't fucking around but i think i'm with you like that turning point oh yeah yeah because at first you know she's like running and scared and then there comes a point where she goes into like like, some alice from resident evil type shit and she out there fucking shit up and i'm like i like her (laughs) yeah that's that's actually something i enjoyed about it 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 seems like the father was a bit overshadowed whereas all the three other members of the family actually developed yeah yeah where the father was just kind of the father the whole movie yeah i i've seen some i can't can't say more in site specific reasons without oh yeah no no i know exactly what you mean though i i've seen some people argue that he felt like emasculated to a degree. I I could kind of understand that point, but he does he does have a role to play, and he mm-hmm. does at certain points throughout the movie he does get shit done. But there is a lot of him just being incapacitated and kind of a bitch throughout the movie, where you're just like, man, will you get the fuck up? Like, what are you doing? Well, I, yeah, but you <laughs> figure I won't, out I, I won't why, necessarily I think. go that. I, I wouldn't necessarily go that far, though, because, I mean, you see, it's, it's not a spoiler because you see it in the trailer. Mm. The father is the first one to really step up and do something. Sure. And I, and so a, at the end, because he was initially the one that engaged the doppelgangers, this is in the trailer, so we're not spoiling oh, yeah. nothing mm-hmm. yet, because he was the first one to engage it, there was not enough room for his character to develop into that leader role because by default he was it. Sure, right, right, because he's the, the... So I can't, the... yeah, so I can't fault him. And if anybody says they feel like he was emasculated, I disagree. Like I said, I, I, I don't necessarily feel that way, but I think they were making somewhat of a statement because there is a line, you know, and this isn't a spoiler person, and it's really hard to talk about this without spoiling it, but th- there is a line where, where Lupita does say to him, like, you're not in charge anymore, and he kind of just shuts the fuck up. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I could see an argument being made for that and how he kind of takes a back uh-huh. seat to a lot of this stuff. I can't because if you were to pick any member of that family to be the main protagonist, it would be her. Sure. And it makes sense because Because of how the story of how is she yeah, was built in the around beginning. Her. Yeah. yeah. No, no, and, and and I get it, I get it. I I, I just feel like people who are and more sensitive to that, that would probably be like yeah. they kinda went out of their way to kind of sideline him. Yeah, I'm with Ben. I didn't get that feeling. Okay. Fair. I fair. mean 
That's I don't, fair. I don't know why I didn't get that feeling. I just didn't. And, and, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and once we start speaking about that, with the actual plot of the film, then we'll be able to better elaborate on why I don't think it was necessary for his character to have evolved as much as others have. Sure. Sure. Um. But 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 it, as far as the family goes, I I did really like them, and I felt like there were no real like throwaway characters, even with the friends, mm-hmm. the, Tim Heidecker and his family. Mm-hmm. They're not in the movie much, but the time that they are there, I was like, you know, they serve a purpose, and sure. I kind of like them. And when when things start to go to shit, you know, I was like, you know, I cared about what happened to them, so it was like, I was like, okay, like like I. Everybody served a purpose in the movie. Mm-hmm. Nobody was just there just to be there. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, there are some metaphors in the movie and some some messages, but not necessarily ro- along racial lines. Well, that's good. More, I felt, across, like, social and economic mm-hmm. lines, because I, I feel like some of the, the, the statements he was trying to make was about, like, social and e- economic, like, inequality class upbringing it's nowhere near as overt as like the racial commentary of get out was but there are subtle things there are lines where winston duke's character um uh, gabe where he talks about his jealousy of um uh uh josh's tim heidecker's character like oh you know he they got this car and their house and this that and the other like even though their their family is doing well off and he's you know college educated he's wearing his um what is it howard university mm-hmm. sweater and stuff through the movie so but it was kind of like this thing of but they just have a little bit more you know and it was kind of like a, a a thing between them and they, he talks about his boat and all this other kind of stuff and how nice it is right. and, and and then as well <sighs> kind of how the doppelgangers could maybe be looked at as being represented people who are who live in a more unfortunate situation where they don't have the same opportunities that their originals have and oh, how sure. you know they you could definitely see that right their lifestyle is is almost like they're poor people mm-hmm. or homeless pretty mm-hmm. much so I kind of felt like he was trying to say something about that. Like like I said, it's not as overt as Get Out was, but there are just little statements and things that are made throughout the movie where it's like, okay, I, I feel like you're trying to make some kind of statement about social inequality and stuff, but he's not beating you over the head with it per se, like, like he did in Get Out. Not like in Get Out it was badly done, but it was much more like right in your face than this was. This was a lot more subtle. Now, like you were saying, the film is a slow burn. It is definitely so. If you go into this expecting, you know, just some action-packed horror shit, like, I, that is not this movie. We don't even see the doppelgangers until a good 20, maybe 30 minutes into the movie. Like, it, it's, it's a slow burn getting to that point. That opening sequence w- during the flashback... That's a good 10 minutes. At least. Like, that went on for much longer than I thought it was going to. Because I was like, okay, they're just going to set something up and kind of give you some clues about what's happening. But as it went on, I was like, man, this is going on for a long time. You know, especially, I think, too, because it's right at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. And you don't really know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of anticipating, like, okay, where is this going? So, but that, that scene does go for a long time. And just setting up all the characters setting up the backstory and all that that went on for a little bit longer than i would have liked yeah that if that's one of the things i can take away from this movie as a negative i felt like it took a little bit long to get to the what brought you here in the first place but once it does get there i enjoyed the majority of everything after that Mm -hmm. i just felt like the pacing could have been it could have cut some stuff out or shorten some scenes just a little bit but again i do feel that during that time he did manage to keep you tense throughout that it keeps finding ways to surprise you Mm -hmm. with what happens but again i I just wanted because there's a and this is in the trailer so this isn't really a spoiler but the the little boy he wanders off at the beach and you see the guy with his hand bleeding and you're thinking like oh it's gonna go one way 
but then it doesn't. doesn't. And it's like, oh, okay, like, that's not what I thought how this was going to go down. But I was like, okay. And even once the doppelganger family shows up, there's a few moments where you think something's going to happen, but it doesn't play out like that. And you're like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> like, I thought that you were going to die right there, and you didn't, so all right. And then there's other moments where I wanted something to happen, and then it did, but not in the way that I thought it was going to. So, yeah, there there is that. How about, I'm curious, like, how did you guys feel about, like, the the deaths and stuff in the movie? Like, like, did you feel that it got too gory or? No. 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 Not at all. Because, no. I mean, there there are some some deaths in here that get pretty bloody. Like, there is, there's points where, in and in, again, this is in a trailer, but Lupita Nyong'o is just, like, head to toe covered in blood for, like, the second half of the movie. And I was just like, I didn't think it was going to get this gory, but. No, it, it didn't phase me. No? No. Okay. Uh, I no. was it's kind of waiting for it. It was quick, and the camera would pan out, so it wasn't really up close and personal what you saw. It, yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. Because yeah, they, they didn't do anything where it's like you're watching somebody's brains get I mean, smashed. So it wasn't like Halloween where a dude steps on the no. cop's head. Or, <laughs> no, no, know, no, 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 definitely Final not. Final Destination where the dude gets impaled with the, sure. the ladder, sure. or you know, that's fair. head gets chopped oh, off. Because he slips out of spaghetti. Right. It, it wasn't nothing like that. It it was quick and mostly off camera. So like yeah. you knew what was going down, but you didn't exactly. Well, no, none of it was off camera. You you saw it. Well, all. well, no, no, no. She's well, right because there there, there are few. there are one where you see the person attacking someone else, but you don't actually see the impact, and you just see like the blood splatting and stuff. So uh-huh. she, you know, no, I I get what you're saying. Where it's oh. not like directly oh. like you just watching somebody get beat to death and right, shit. right, right. Yeah, no, I I I know what you mean. Um, there there are a couple kills though that happen. And, and this is what I said about how he's kind of like a visionary because the way he shot it, there's a scene where the camera is outside of a house mm-hmm. and they got a lot of big glass windows and stuff. And you watch people get stabbed and killed and is the camera never goes inside the house during those killings. Right, they're, you they're see it all from outside. What, what else is going on outside? Right. And it's like, it, it's just so crazy because it's detached from what's happening but I felt like it almost made it, like, even worse because I felt like I was, like, eavesdropping over somebody's fence. Sure. And I just saw a family get murdered. And, you know, and, like, I wasn't supposed to be there. Almost like a security camera almost to a degree. It, and I it, thought that was it. It, it, was, it was definitely unexpected voyeurism. It made it go, yes. Whoa. Like, it, it, made the, it made what happened that much Yes, worse. voyeurism. They, that, they that's a good way to describe it. did the same thing in the Halloween movie. If you remember when Michael comes in and he's killing the oh, body shop guy yeah, mm-hmm. and it's not focused on the body shop guy. Yeah, it's like it's in the background, you, but you like, see you him doing see it, it. Yeah, but it ain't what the camera's focused on. That, that That's a good point. I, I did like I did like that. And there's some other just shot choices that he makes in it where I was just like, OK, I like the one kill. A, one specific kill. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the theater that we were at, they were like, oh, that's. Hmm. Okay, you're gonna have to tell me the spoilers. Because yeah, there's a couple yeah, that I was I... like that with, but I'm not sure which one you're referring to. So, um, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I was really impressed with how well the humor was balanced with everything. Yeah, like, I thought that was good too. Because there, there are moments of like real stressful moments. There's um when the father first approaches the family. And he's trying to talk them back, like you know, I don't know what y'all are doing here, but y'all need to leave or whatever, yada yada. And he can tell that it's not really going the way that he wants it to. It's just the little moments of levity that they sprinkle throughout it. Just it just cracked me up, like because he's a very refined, you know, like highly educated black man. He ain't all no like hood shit or whatever. But because he's in the moment of confrontation, he tries to be that way. And he's like, he's like, now nah, I done told y'all to get off my property. Now the police are on day way. <laughs> <laughs> and that shit just cracked me the fuck up because of how he he's not like that and we as an audience know that and to just see him try to like get ghetto with them was just like it it was it was it was very well spent. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. It was very fresh prince. Yes. Not not like that, but it was very fresh prince. Like him trying to act tough and then be like, Okay, this ain't going well. Let's act tougher. Yes, because there's um um and I, I like it, it was that it was fucking hootie. It was yes, hootie. yeah, I know. That's what I say. He is he is totally hootie. So hootie. 
and and we kind of spoiled it a teeny tiny bit in the in the intro to this with the whole hide a key joke. But there is a there is a moment where and I mean you see it in trail you know that they get into the house. But there is a moment where the family's trying to get the doppelgangers are trying to get into the family's house, and they find the hide a key. And and Lupita she she says a line where she's like, oh they use the hide a key, and Winston Duke's like hide a key, what kind of white shit? And, <laughs> and like that shit cracked the whole theater up, like it was hilarious. And it was just little little stuff like that where it'd be this tense ass moment where you're like, oh shit's going down, and they would just throw a little joke in there, but it wouldn't you know just the movie didn't come to a halt. And it's like, now here's a joke. And then keep going. You know, it was just like the pace kept going, but he was able to just sprinkle stuff in there. And I think that's because he comes from a comedic background and he is used to doing comedies and stuff that he was able to work that stuff in, but still make it a part of the story and not just go like, okay, and now a joke. And then back to the horror shit. It was all just one fluid thing. And it just, it, it actually made the moments feel real because when people are afraid, sometimes they, you know, make, you know, jokes and shit to try and me break the tension. That's and and that's a, a human thing. And I always I, do that. No, no. And, and I thought that that was very clever. Like I, I, you know, not to say he's the only person that's ever put humor in a horror movie because well, no. Halloween has jokes and shit in it. But the way he did it, for example, in Halloween, when the babysitter's getting killed by Michael, <laughs> and the little boy is all like, oh, shit. And they said, the other, like, the whole movie stopped for him to, like, make jokes and shit. And then when he runs up to Don't the other go dude, there, you're, you're going to die. And this and the other. And it was like, okay, nope. there is a moment right now that's happening where this woman is being stabbed to death. And we keep cutting back to this kid making jokes and shit. And it's just like, it kind of made that kill not feel as visceral as it should have. Cause that was a fucked up moment when he's dragging her by the feet and she's trying to get out the hall and then cut back to the kid being crazy little black kid and shit. And it's like, okay, this did it better. I, I, in my opinion, your entrance is good. His was better. Oh God. Stop making references <laughs> to Batman forever. <laughs> um, but okay. Uh, one of the other things, um, that, that, that I wanted to touch on is, Sometimes in films like these, there are characters or instances that feel contrived. And especially Benoit will know what I'm talking about because when we did the, all the horror reviews, and, and you as well when we did uh, the one for... Um, Evil Dead 2. Yeah, Evil Dead 2. There are instances in character actions that don't make sense where you're just like, nobody would do that. Like, why are you doing this? Like, why would you run up here when you could have went down there? Why would you not grab this thing instead of that? You know, in this, though, I felt like everybody acted like a real person. Right. And they had real reactions to shit. Because even there's a moment with the kids and they're trying to find shit to defend themselves with. And it's just like, hey, this is what's here. So this is what I'm grabbing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it I may like not be. their weapons of choice. Right. Practical. Since but it's you like, hey. It up, I like the weapons of choice. Yeah. Especially the one that the little boy picks. Yeah. And I mean, and even there's a, a little getaway moment. Um, a little bit into the movie and it just, the way it all played out, it was like, Hey, I'm not just doing dumb shit. Now, granted, there are some dos S X machina moments where it's like kind of the hand of God came in and it's like, and yo foot just so happened to be caught in this thing and you got pulled this way. And it's like, okay, whatever. It's a movie. But there was never a moment where somebody, I was just yelling at the screen, like, why are you doing this? Right, which we often have. Right. Now, there is one, but the movie does a good job of explaining it later, because once you find out more about certain things, it's like, oh, now I see why you kept going out and checking on this thing when everybody was like, hey, don't go over there. And it's like, no, no, I need to go look at this thing over here. And it was like, okay, because there's more to that. Right. I, I do want to know from you guys, though, there have been people that, and I don't want you to give me your rating yet, but there have been people who online have been very adamant defenders of the movie. Like, this is the best, like, holy shit. Is, I, I feel like it's, it's a well-crafted film, but there are flaws. Mm -hmm. and not and i don't necessarily mean plot wise but just how the movie comes off and your enjoyment of the film film do you guys feel like because i think right now it's at the 93 percent on rotten tomatoes do you feel that that 
rating is warranted or do you think that people are overly praising this unnecessarily? Ben, well, I'll have you go first. <laughs> I personally, um, I'm, I'm going to wait until we actually talk about spoilers and whatnot before I even answer this question. I'm going to, I'm going to wait. I'm going to refrain for now. Okay. Okay. All right. Mel, what about you? I mean, it was a good movie, so I can see mm. how they would, you know, be praising it. Sure. I don't know if it's 93% worthy, but... Sure. And, and and again, keep in mind, this is not saying that it's the best movie ever. It, they're just saying that 93% of the people who reviewed it liked it. Right. So, yeah. Because sometimes I feel like people see that percentage number yeah, yeah. and they get caught up in that. And it's like, no, no, no. That's not saying this is the goodness of the movie. Right, right, right. But, right. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I... I mean, it was a good movie, mm-hmm. and everybody that I went with seemed very, very much into it and enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So, I mean, I I guess I can see where majority of people that see it are going to like it, even if they don't pick up on some things that maybe they should. Or right, I I, I think I think I'm in the same boat as you. I I thought it was a good, a well made movie. I thought the acting was good. I, I enjoyed the majority of it. Mm-hmm. It's not perfect by no, no means. No. Like I said, I feel like it, it drags in places. Mm-hmm. I feel like there are things that were overly explained and then other things that weren't explained enough. So I I do, I guess the real question is, is this better or as good as Get Out? I thought it was better. Okay, interesting. I don't think it's better. Okay, I, mean, I, I, I I'm with Ben on this. I don't think it's better. I think it's about at the same level, but I definitely don't think it's better. No, I but, don't know. And, and and no, and if that's your opinion, that's fine. I mean, Get Out was good, mm-hmm. and at the end of it, you're like, what? Sure. I just think that even though I had that same feeling at the end of Us, mm-hmm. it was less. Like get out I had to go out, go back and watch a couple times. Sure. Before that that clarity come through. Sure. This even though I was a little confused at the end, mm-hmm. it still made sense. Okay. Is that No, 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 that's kinda... fair. That that's totally fair. I I think I would say that I feel that get out is if it I would say it's at about the same but get out is still I think a better film because I just think that get out it was very complete by the end okay i by the end of that there was things about it that i wanted to go back and watch just to see how it all connected Mm -hmm. but i didn't leave with so many questions and i mean some people could look at it as a good thing but with us i had so many questions by the end that it kind of soured me to parts of the movie okay so yeah that's 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 why i'm like by the time i watched get out by the end i was like i'm satisfied with that you know, I need to watch it again to get the full picture. But with my feelings when I left, I was good. This, I was like, I feel like there is so much shit that I'm at odds with or that I need more clarification on that. It's like, I can't just enjoy it and leave because the whole time I'm like, well, why did this happen? And why did this person tell this person this, if this happened? And yeah. So like, not much more. Like, sure. you know, get out, say, at a s- eight and a half. And I mean, all this stuff is subjective. And I think it's you know, gonna, if you like, just, it, it's like, get out's like an eight and a half. Us is at an eight. Look, Twitter's going to yell at you no matter what. You ain't got to keep your. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But no, no, you're fine. What? Okay, so, because I, I we got to get to spoilers because I can't keep beating around a bush with this stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and give our ratings. Um, If you haven't listened to one of our reviews, our rating system is five tiers. It goes really fucking liked it, liked it, meh, hated it, and really fucking hated it. Benoit, what would you rate Get Out? No, us. Oh, Jesus. Us. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, no, I'll do both. <laughs> Get Out five. No, I'll do both. Get Out five out of five. Us four out of five. So that would be a liked it, or a really fucking liked it and a liked it. Okay. By, by your yes. metric, yeah. All right. So, 
you would think Ben's a special guest and he has been on the podcast for like six months or so, but right. it's fine. <laughs> DJ Melly Mel, what would you rate us? Everybody. I'm going to go with, I liked it. Okay. Just because we don't have one in between liked it and meh. Like, liked it is kind of the okay. middle. Okay, yeah, yeah. And well, meh is more of the middle. It's like, eh, no, you like, know. Liked it is is middle between really fucking liked it and meh. Sure, okay. So, I mean. Look, I, what do you want, six stars? No, <laughs> no, I don't. I want to keep it at five. No, it should be really like, really loved it, liked it. It was okay. Didn't like it. No. Hey, well, well, loved it is really fucking really liked fucking it. I just liked it. felt Two it was Two snaps it away. <laughs> no. Um, I, I'd say I liked it. I okay. Mean, there was more that I liked about it than what I didn't. Sure. For me to say meh, I usually leave the theater just kind of indifferent. Sure. At least with us, I had quite a few questions that I, like, theorized and thought about. Sure. And it was on, you know, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I was, I enjoyed the suspense. So, yeah, I'm going to go with liked it. That's fair. Um, myself, I am also going to be in the liked it camp. I enjoyed the movie overall for what it was. I liked the little twists and turns that happened throughout. I thought it was funny. It was scary. Like I said, it was always on the edge of my seat throughout most of it, though it is not a perfect film. It does have flaws, and I think it leaves too many questions. And to be honest, if you're like me and you overanalyze stuff, you will start to pick the movie apart the more you think about it. So I feel like if you don't, if you just go in and watch this movie just for what it is, don't try to compare it to Get Out, don't go in with too many expectations, you might even really fucking like the movie. You might love it. But for me, I, 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 I couldn't go, I honestly, if there wasn't for certain moments in the movie, I, it would have ended up a meh because I thought it was good, Same. but like I said, I, I'm the more I think about it, the more it bothers me. So I, so for that person who was arguing with me and called me a fucking parasite on Twitter, because <laughs> I even dare question how great this movie was. I did like the movie. It ain't perfect. Get over that shit. It, it's not. <laughs> Black Panther, okay? No, and even that movie ain't perfect. No. Like, there's some shit. Yeah, you ripped Black Panther apart. Look, I'm like, look, these motherfuckers, it's like, yeah, vibranium cures gunshot wounds. Like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, so, that is our rating. Um, We are going into spoilers, kids, so if you don't want to have the movie spoiled for you, get the fuck out. If you've seen the movie, though, stay, because I got questions. Insert siren sound here. My biggest thing when we walked out of this movie, and me and Ben Wa talked about this like in the parking lot to the movie theater and in the theater when we were just sitting there. One of the big things that I did not understand about this was Red. Mm -hmm. Now, it's revealed at the end of the movie that um, Adelaide and Red were switched when right. they were children during that flashback. So the entire movie from that flashback on, that is the clone. Right. And the real um, Adelaide is red, quote unquote, the tethered, as they call them. I, I really had a problem with how they presented that because once it's revealed that they were switched, I'm like, a lot of what happened in the movie didn't make sense because if they were switched as children, mm -hmm. why, when she broke into the house, why is she explaining to the mother, what the tethered are. She's like, oh, and then, you know, there, there was governments and clones and we live underground and tunnels. And it's said, she knows all that. She took you. Right. Why are you explaining? That was all for the audience, but it didn't, now it made more sense that she was telling the other family members, but she was talking directly to the mother. See, I thought that she was just like, I thought it was weird at first. And then once I realized it, that part actually made sense to me. Because she, she didn't break gaze with the mother. Yeah. Like, at all. I know. So she's, like, telling everybody the, in the family how this goes. Mm -hmm. And she's looking directly at the mother, like, 
you know how the shit is. But you can step up now. But 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 that was the thing though. Why talking riddles and shit in this? Once upon a time, there was a little girl. I'd be like, bitch, you kidnapped me when I was fucking eight years old and stole my fucking life. Fuck you. I'm here to kill your ass and take my life back. Like, why play all these games and shit and not just come right out and say it? It probably had to do with, you know, you were talking about how the the tethered were supposed to be this underprivileged class, like the poor people. Sure. If we're staying along those lines, sure. she's explaining all of it as to show what the 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 mother, all these things that she got to do. Right. She got to have a natural, you know, a, a daughter that's athletic. She got to have her son in a hospital mm. and she didn't have to do it herself. Right. You know, she didn't. She got to pick who she, she, she married and husband. she was just stuck with this right. dude because that's she who got she all picked this. up there. Which is another thing that really didn't make sense to me. If Red is not really a clone, mm-hmm. why is she tethered to her clone? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Like, there's nothing about the tunnels in the lab that makes, at least nothing that they explain in the movie, mm-hmm. that makes them tethered to them besides the fact that they're clones. She is not a clone. So why does she have to get with Abraham, who was her version of the the father, just because her clone did it. Maybe it had to do with, like, the environmental settings. You know, because she said you had to eat the raw rabbit meat. Sure. So maybe... Because that's her living situation. Right, but, but maybe still. something in eating the raw rabbit meat, I don't know, kept her under... See, now you're you're writing the movie know. for him. See, see, and that's the thing. They never explain it in the movie. That's what bothers me. Because I'm like... And then as well, too, and and me and Benoit talked about this as well, and you can chime in on this one, Ben. I did not understand why the tethered, what broke their control? Because when we see in the flashbacks, when she's a little girl, the when they're at the amusement park, Mm -hmm. there's people pretending to be on roller coasters, pretending to feed each other food, just like the people above ground, right? because they don't have a choice. How does she break that to make them independent to come above ground and attack these people? Shouldn't they all be mimicking what the people above ground are doing? Well, that's where she, that's where Red began talking about, um, or not Red, but yeah, because Red's the human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Adelaide's the human. No, no. Well, Red is Adelaide, but yeah. Red is who we think is Adelaide. Yes, yes, yes. Because Adelaide, um... Well, Adelaide, when she came back up, she started talking about, oh, I'm the cho- I must be the chosen one, God, and all this shit. Yeah. And that's when, it, that's when everything lost me. Because mm-hmm. as, far, as far as she told uh, the, the Red, that Red already fucking knew, it was really just an info, it was an exposition dump for the audience. Exactly. Which I'm like, this is fucked up. This is stupid. Um, the clones, or the doppelgangers, whatever you want to call them, the, the tethered, mm-hmm. were actually just human clones made by the U.S. government in an right. experiment. But the mm. experiment failed. How the experiment failed? We don't well, fuck know. Fuck knows. <laughs> how, how did it fail? And they're all down there. And mm. they got abandoned. So what? if the experiment failed, what was the experiment? Was it just cloning? Right. Because I'm assuming the rabbits they ate were probably cloned as well. Yep. I know mm-hmm. rabbits breed really fucking quick, but... <laughs> but no, but, but yeah, it, it's implied that they're, the rabbits were, are cloned. Were too. rabbits cloned in, as well? But any, anyway, I'm kind of... Main point, main main string of, of thought that made me lose fucking track of what the hell what was going on. What if they stayed clones is. by eating the cloned rabbits, and then when the cloned rabbits ran out, then they uh, no, because they're still to eating a the rabbits. Conclusion based though. on evidence that was never given. Here. Exactly, exactly. See, and that's what I'm saying. I get what you're trying to do, but they never say that. Yeah, in that the that's conjecture. All we you have to go off that. of is what the movie told us. But no, I get, I get, I get where you're going. I get it. I get it. But they were, they were, they were clones. They're obviously clones. All right. And right. for one reason, for some reason or whatever, they're somehow tethered to their humans from whom they were cloned off of. Mm-hmm. Um, one, how the hell they get the DNA of every fucking person in the U.S. Yes. I, I was going to bring that up. Two, yes. if this was a government experiment, all right, and it failed, what were they initially, like, I'll, 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 I'll let that slide. Okay. It failed. So what do they do? They abandoned all the clones? Like. So they abandoned their fucking subjects. You would think that they would have killed the clones so that people wouldn't find out about it. Like, like, yeah, like yeah. I can't believe that they just left them down there. It's like eventually something like this was going to happen or people would at least found them at some point eventually. But so they left their clones down there, right? And this, it, 
all we saw was underneath the fun house. Mm-hmm. Um, which did not seem to be that big of an area at all. No. But somehow, we don't know when this experiment was deemed a failure and they quit it. Mm-hmm. I would assume it happened prior to 1986 when the real girl was kidnapped. Exactly, because during those flashbacks, all the tethered are just wandering the halls and shit, and she was able to just walk out on her own. Exactly. So there was no lab technicians, no security down there, nothing. So we would assume that at least by 1986, the experiment had been abandoned at that point. And so we're brought to the present time, which this movie was probably filmed in uh, 2018. So we'll take on 32 years, okay? Sure. Mm-hmm. You're telling me in 32 years, no cobwebs, no spiders, the place still looks fucking immaculate. Are, are, are we to assume that some of these doppelgangers were like clones of janitors? Like, how did they... <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I'm well, well, well theoretically, no. Theoretically, yeah. Theoretically, yeah. But... They also breeded rabbits, despite the fact they had no real cognitive right, abilities because they right. were tethered. And two, how did the girl, the real girl, we saw her chained up to a bed, or handcuffed to a bed. How'd she get out of those handcuffs? Right. And why, as soon as she, she was old enough that even though she was knocked out, she'd probably wander around for a while. At no point did she come back up to the surface via a fucking escalator that worked the entire time? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. One of and the other if, things, go ahead, go ahead. And the tethered are supposedly tethered to the humans. So when the tethered, who we thought was the real mother, learned how to dance as a kid, whom only learned how to dance because it was her, the 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 ma, the grandma, who mm-hmm. all we really see in the flashbacks, probably got her into dance because she wasn't talking. Yep. Because mm-hmm. everybody thought she was like, oh, uh, PS, PTSD or anything. Right. And so the tethered actually learned how to dance. Not mm-hmm. the human. Or did the human just suddenly become a fucking ballet when she was in the underground? Like, what? No, I think she knew it beforehand. Well, no, 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 because no. Cause, cause, cause they have that flashback where after she they come back from the carnival, they're like, she's not speaking anymore, and they're like, we'll try to get her to draw or to dance or sing or something like that to try and get her back immac- um, not, not immaculated, but uh, acclimated to being a normal person. So right. it was through dance that brought her out of her shell, quote-unquote. But in reality, Red, the real Red, just didn't know how to speak English because she didn't, none of the tether talk. They right. all just, Arr! and all that crazy shit. Right. So she had to learn how to be a normal person. So, you know, it, it, she even says to her, um, we're just going to call red the tethered and Adelaide is Adelaide, but we all know who is who, but the tethered, she tells her the only reason I know how to dance is because of you. Hmm. So the, the clone learned how to dance but then they're implying that the real girl learned how to dance because of her clone. Why are you tethered to your clone? Yeah. Yeah, That's they, the thing that don't make sense to me. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Exactly, the experiences that Adelaide was having underground should be what Red is having above ground, not vice versa. Right. That's exactly, what threw me off. It was already established during the flashback before the kidnapping that all the clones were just mimicking the actions exactly. of people, the real humans. Exactly. So why the fuck is a human suddenly mimicking a clone? Exactly. And then it, and it, then we, we went into this conversation too at work. Why? Okay, because we're going to assume that the experiment has stopped at least by 86. So, you know, I'm no scientist or whatever, but I can tell you that genetics don't work this way. You cannot have... We're going to assume that the tethered had sex with Abraham, who was the clone of the father and had those two kids. You, there is no guarantee that you would have those same two children who look identical to the real children. And there's no way to even guarantee that you have a boy and a girl. You could have two girls, two boys, two kids that look totally opposite. Cause those kids aren't clones. Those are their children. They had already stopped cloning people by that point. Those kids are teenagers. They would have been born at the earliest in, like, 2004. Mm -hmm. If that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, how are they tethered to their real kids above ground when they're technically not even clones? They're children of clones. Yeah, they're half clone, half normal human. Right, right. Whatever that would be. So are we to assume, then, that that the real Adelaide, who was down in the underground, fucked the tethered version of the guy who the clone got with? I would assume so. Was, was yeah, she banging him? Because she does say, well, you got to have your child in a nice hospital when Maya had to be cut out of me and all this other kind of shit. So we, we're, it's implied that she had to sleep with him and they had babies together. 
But I'm like, so is that how all the other clones work too? Do they all fuck each other or were their kids cloned? And and you you already brought this up once, but I I'm gonna let it go. It's not that big of a deal, but I have a real hard time believing that the government had the time, money, and resources to get the DNA of every single human being in America and clone them. There's like what 350 million people in this country, maybe more. And you're telling me that there is another 350 or more million people living underground too currently as well. It would have made more sense if they said this one town, Mm -hmm. they did that too. But when they do that, that last shot at the end of the movie and you see them all holding hands together and shit, that is millions of fucking people going across them fields and all that shit. I'm like, how did they clone every person in America? Like that, that, that didn't make sense to me. But again, I'll let that go. But it, I, I can't let go of the fact that the children who aren't clones, they're just child, they're just a byproduct of a real person and a clone having children together. Why are they tethered to their real copies or the real versions of them up there? They shouldn't even look like those kids. Hell, they they shouldn't even be the same gender of those kids up there because they're just kids. They're not clones of those kids. They're just kids. Maybe it's because don't don't write this movie for him. <laughs> well, no, exactly. this is given in the movie. You can only come to a movie. conclusion based on information the movie gives you. you uh, but, but no, spend. go ahead, go ahead, go make your argument. You have make a clone argument. and a human. Sure. Underground, correct? Sure. Mm-hmm. Above ground, mm-hmm. you have a clone and a human. Mm-hmm. Essentially, they're they're flopped. Sure. But you still have a clone and a human making children. So okay. Maybe that's what happens when clones breed. That they're still their children are tethered to other potential children. Well, yeah, because their DNA's shared. <sighs> it's weak, but 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 oh, I'll okay. give it to you. But I'll give it to you. It's weak, but I'll okay, give it to well, you. Well, what? Why is the son, the mm-hmm. tethered son, have half his face burnt? Because he's a pyro. Okay, now this this is one of the theories I wanted to bring up. I'm glad you uh, brought yeah, this I, up. I, I, well, yeah, I I mentioned this to you in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if you're going to say what I said to you, or you come up with a different theory, but I figured if the clones mimic what the humans do, and the mm-hmm. boy is trying to learn magic, maybe the, the clone just somehow fucked up and end up burning himself. But well, in that case, she in does that case, say that he lit something on fire. Okay, okay, all right, all right. I want to get but this in theory. that case, mm-hmm. does that mean, well, I thought the clones perfectly mimicked the action, so the clones aren't exactly duplicate. If they're tethered to be like virtually the same exact thing, yeah, and and then they, and can, then they can then they can, then, then him burning himself proves they can have different experiences. Well, yeah, the fact that they became independent from their original copies proves that too, but yeah. only in certain circumstances because we still haven't got to the whole issue of why could the son control his tethered version but nobody else could because he makes his tethered version kill himself and walk backwards into the fire. But well, well, nobody well, else could control their tethered version of them except well, him. It, it wasn't a control issue. It, it's a matter of why did why is the son the only clone that we saw, the only one that would mimic the real kid move by move. When, what, None of the other clones did. Well, well, it, no, because Abraham does. Because when the father's adjusting his glasses when they're uh-huh. sitting on the couch, Abraham pushes up imaginary glasses there. too he does the same thing and the white girl clones did the same thing yeah like the one chick she was always doing cartwheels, the cartwheels and all that shit yeah yeah and so the white girl clone was doing cartwheels. now granted this was after they had killed them but still but still no no i i, I, I get what you're saying but th- this is my thing because i want to get to this theory so there are theories that the sun is also a tether that was switched as a child yeah. So, the theory goes, and and this is some of the evidence to support the theory. The theory goes is that, the because they say in the movie, the year prior, when they were there, he almost burned the house down doing his little magic trick. Uh The theory is that the real son burned himself up. Adelaide, who is a clone, went and swapped them because he was all fucked up and swapped him for a different, the clone kid, and then brought him back. Because there's moments in the movie when he's on the beach and the girl does the cartwheel into his sandcastle. He's like, oh, I wasn't building a sandcastle. I was making a tunnel. So he already knows about the tunnels. Right. And there's points in the movie where they say shit like, oh, your brother's so weird. And he like talks in these weird languages and stuff like that. 
So that's another clue. And then the big one is the fact that when um, he um, the, the 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 reason that um, he was um, able to control his tethered version was because he knew that that was their weakness. Mm-hmm. Nobody else thought to do that. Adelaide, maybe she didn't think of it because a lot of the time she was like restrained and tied up for most of the movie and shit. Mm-hmm. Like there was rare moments where she was just free to do whatever she wanted. But, um, cause even when she has a confrontation at the end with red, she's still handcuffed cause she chokes her to death with the handcuffs and right. shit. So she couldn't just freely do whatever she wanted to, but he figured out and knew in the closet, like, Oh, I can make him follow my hand and take his mask off and do the magic trick and shit. And in the car, when they're listening to I Got Five on it, Adelaide has to teach him how to keep rhythm. And she's like, you snap your fingers like this, and he can't seem to do it right. But later in the movie, when you see Pluto, I think is what they call him, the the kid's clone, uh-huh. when he's getting ready to set the car on fire and blow them up, he starts snapping his fingers and shit. And people are suggesting that that was a clue to her, like, I am your son, you know, like, this is the real me or whatever, because he knew how to snap his fingers, but she had to teach the other boy how to do the shit. So, I don't know if it's, it could just be fan theories, but there's a lot of evidence to support it. And I was like, you know, the more I think about it, I was like, I could see it. I could see it, because I did think it was weird that, you know, granted, maybe he was just a weird kid, but I'm like, you can't snap your fingers, kid? You don't know how to keep rhythm? Though. But once okay. they explain, like, him building the sand tunnel and he was speaking weird languages that nobody understood, that kind of connects. Just saying. Okay. Well, I'll give credence to the fact that if the house burnt down or damn near burnt down a year ago, that would explain the burns. Mm-hmm. And that could also explain brain damage, which is why he kind of talked funny. But didn't didn't do, like, why... Maybe you can say brain damage for kind of why he crawled around like a like a dog or whatever. But the motherfucker climbed up a tree like like boom. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was weird as shit too. Oh, oh, and that was one of the other things too. His magic trick. People are suggesting that the reason he couldn't do the magic trick is because he was a clone because he knew of the trick because his original did it, but he could never get it right. He was like, I used to be able to do this, but I can't do it now. So, again, that one's a little bit weaker than some of the other clues, but, or evidence for it, but, yeah, they, everything that was weird about him, they're saying it's because he was a clone, and he's trying to adjust to being a normal person, and that's kind of why they give each other that knowing look at the end, where he's like, bitch, I know you the clone, and she smiles at him, I took it as, like, oh, you gonna be cool with it, because I'm your mom in any fucking way, so whatever, like, I'm the only mother you've ever known, so fuck right. that bitch that I just choked to death in the basement, but... She could have been smiling at him because she's like, I know you're a clone, too. Like, and that's their secret that they share together. But I could be wrong. I mean, who knows? Unless Jordan Peele comes out and say, yes, this is what happened. It's all speculation at this point. Of course. Uh, and how, exa- how exactly are these clones tethered? Yeah. Never, uh, that's, as far as yeah. we're aware, all they say is government experiment failed. Yeah. So, so like, what was all we can assume is the experiment was to clone people. Yes. And they say it was like it was to control people, so they probably wanted clones of everybody so they can plant the clones in place of the real person and control them, but it failed. That that's that's the most I can get it from it. Like they wanted to have body snatchers. Yeah, yeah. And 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 they did have classrooms and shit that they show in the movie, so they were trying to educate the clones. So some of them could have been more educated than others, but just once they abandoned the experiment, there was nobody there to teach anybody anything anymore and it just kinda all went by the wayside. I mean, so, so we never should know. We assume that, yeah, should we assume the scientists cloned themselves too? Like exactly. It, I mean, I guess. I mean, should they seem to got everybody else and fucking all DNA? These people ate were rabbits. Yeah, she literally Raw said rabbit. all we had was rabbits. Right. Yeah, it's like mm, so the human they body had don't no work other like form that. of nutrients, no water. Uh, maybe like, maybe there was water, and they they didn't need to necessarily say that. But it's like there are still other vitamins and minerals your body needs that you ain't getting from raw meat. See, that's kind of why I thought. Why the clones were all fucked up. That could be. Because... That, that, that's a good... Actually, now that is good. I'll give you that <laughs> one. That is good. Because the other ones, you keep trying to write the movie for him, but like, that one is actually good. Like, 
there's been studies before that if you don't eat the right kind of things, then you don't develop properly. Yeah, mentally and shit like that. Yeah, no, so that I, that's good. I'll give you that one. I won't go that route. I'll go the fact they never were part of a society like ours was. Why they couldn't talk, why they couldn't communicate in English, because they never were around people that could communicate in English. And I was going to give, I actually th- thought there was some credence to your argument why her voice is all fucked up. Because her throat probably, her throat and vocal cords probably got damaged yes. when mm-hmm. she was choked. Yeah, so yeah, when she chokes her out as a little girl. That's why she sounds all like, oh, and, and shit. Yeah, because she like this. fucking... Like, she knows words, she just can't get them out. Yeah. And, and and there's other things in it, too, that, you know, I won't go into from here. But it's like, I know somebody that's listening to this is probably like, oh, you guys are just shitting on the movie and tearing it apart, but you said you liked it. We did like the movie, but there are a lot of things that happen, especially once you get to the twist at the end. And it's just like, okay, wait a minute. If this is true, then you've kind of thrown a monkey wrench in everything you've established up until this point. Because I'm like, how did this eight-year-old girl organize a whole society of clones to be like military precision? Like they show them like with their clothes folded up and putting them at the bed and like, yes, sir. And all this shit. And I'm like... I'm 32, and I couldn't organize 10 people to do this shit. <laughs> right? How did this little girl get them to do all that? She wasn't in a military household or anything. I'm like, right. well, because you watched a Feeding America commercial when you were, like, eight? Like, I'm like, come on now. So, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things where the more you think about it, the more it's just kind of like, mm. So, again, if you just go into it and just watch it for what it is, maybe you won't have as many issues with it as we did, but... I for sure had a lot of questions when I walked out of that theater and I was like, God damn it. Like if you would have just left the movie as it was and just not did that twist, I wouldn't have brought up any of this shit. Cause the fact that she was a clone at the end, that's what throws everything out the window. That one change or, or just said that the son was a clone and not her. Then that would have changed the whole dynamic of the movie. And I'd have been like, okay, you could have still had the twist, but not have me questioning why didn't she just tell the family that the reason she's doing this is because she stole her when she was a little girl? Why have her explain what the tethered are to a tethered person that stole her in the first place? Especially when it's just them two in a tunnel at the end and she's in the classroom and she's explaining like how all this shit happened. It's like, well, she knows what happened. She took you. Why didn't she just get out? Yeah, why did she ever just leave? <sighs> no, I mean, you can't no, tell me no, she no. Out She's making problem. a fucking pun. <laughs> no, I really wasn't. No, no. Oh, okay. Pun or not, but I'm serious. <laughs> You're giving me too much credit. <laughs> okay, all right. Literally, like, literally. The girl could have we... wandered out of the... That, that is true. Like, And Ben said that too. Like, the escalator still worked. She could have just left. Even if the, the escalator, escalator went down the hallway, yeah. the escalator went down, and then you just had that real long hallway with the classrooms that had the desks and the bunnies in them. Because, yeah, she does eventually uh, figure it out. To, yeah, because I mean, they, they get we, out, clearly, we, so. I mean, when we saw how simple that was at the end, I'm like, okay, that wouldn't have bothered me if in the very fucking beginning, when they showed the flashback again and all the mimicking, it wasn't in the same fucking hallway. She was like, what, a 50, 100 fucking feet from the surface of the earth the whole goddamn time? Yeah, fuck that. I'll, uh, if I and, and, if I would have been in that situation and I would have known about the above world, yeah. obviously I know where I live. Right. So I'm going to... I'm going to use your logic, though, and I'm going to write the movie for him. Okay. Maybe, maybe, because she knew that she swapped her, maybe she was afraid to go back to her family because she couldn't talk, remember? So how could she explain... What happened to her? They would just be like, oh, it's just this other random kid that showed up that looks like our kid. And she's all Bleh! and shit. They probably think she was a little zombie or demon or some shit and just kill her or lock her up. Yeah, so maybe. But that's not in the movie. So that's totally me just giving him more credit than what he actually put in there. So <laughs> we're going to disregard that. It's just. I, I like the movie. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but when it comes to horrors, this is going to be just a repeat of what I said back in October when we did all those podcasts. And this doesn't just apply to horror or thriller films. When it comes to horror, thriller, suspense, uh, suspense, drama, anything like that which which needs to heavily rely on a story narrative to really get emotion out of the viewer, don't give me some half-ass excuse or some excuse which doesn't explain everything like, I'd rather you give me nothing at all than give me something that I can call bullshit on. No, I agree. 
I agree. Because honestly, because that one change, if you would have just took that part out about her being a clone, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. That one thing well, no. fucked the whole I, rest of the movie up. I, I wouldn't have minded that. I think that would have been a really good twist, and I still think it was. I just don't like the fact that the human explained everything to the clone. Yeah, that, that didn't make it, like, sense. Yeah. Because it, everything, like, why is she, and then she's like, chosen one god. Some She tries to bring, like, spirituality into this shit, and that fucking pissed me off. You don't make science, don't do that shit. Yeah. But the fact that we're to believe all the tethered are tethered to the, the real humans, I guess. Or just, I want to say the organic, for lack of a better term. Okay. The clones are tethered to the organics, right? But the organic somehow wound up in the position where she became tethered to her exactly. clone. Mm-hmm. And that, and, and that uh, doesn't make sense. There's nothing in the movie that explains that at all. No. Nothing. There's, there's no reason for us to understand why that happened unless, because they, they never said there was some kind of magical barrier between them. It was a fucking trap door with an escrow. <laughs> there was, I'm, I'm serious. No, 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 it was. There was no mystical field. There was no science, no, no thing she walked into or through that explained that. Yeah. And it all felt, everything felt to me very like TNG first season, Wesley Crusher saves the goddamn day. Why? <laughs> it's like, it was Deus Ex Machina. It was like, wh- how come this person can do that? Oh, they just they just can. No, yeah. don't explain to me something and then have something just fucking happen because they can't. No, yeah, that pissed me off. No, and there are gonna be people that think I am say, oh, you're just nitpicking everything. Well, no shit, because they're giving me bullshit information. Of course, I'm gonna tear it apart. No, I I don't think that's nitpicking at all. Those are valid it, points. The reason they gave me did not seem to fit in, like. Whatever universe you want to create, whatever kind of bullshit realm universe you want to create, go for it. But don't make the logic of your universe illogical to that universe. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. Because everything up until that point, I never questioned it. It wasn't until they said she was a clone. Because, I mean, yeah, I thought it was weird that the tether, that the clones were tethered to their originals anyway. Because I'm like, well, why would that matter? Like, right. there's nothing that are connecting y'all besides the fact that y'all have the same DNA. But that doesn't mean anything like... And maybe you can make the argument of, oh, well, twins act alike kind of and do the similar thing because they do have the twin sisters mm-hmm. in, in the white family. But even with that, I was like, that's still a stretch. But again, I didn't really question it. Once they said she was really a clone, then I'm like, okay, so then why is her organic acting like the clone? Like, that? that okay, now you've lost me. But okay. And, and if the clones mimic the organics... Which is how they have a lot of the same attributes. Because the girl that used to run track, the, the clone could fucking sprint. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, it establishes in the very beginning there's a lot of underground tunnels and shit that was abandoned. And if they did all these cloning experiments or whatever in the U.S., there's going to be a lot of fucking tunnels. But given the small area that we saw underground in this part of wherever the hell the story took place, fucking East Coast, whatever. How the fuck would they even have the room to physically uh, pick up all these, like, do all these things to mimic the actions of everybody else? Yeah. Like, it... It's like you half-assed that explanation. Yeah. And, and part of me feels like, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but a lot of these critics seem to be on Jordan Peele's nuts right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I think this was a good film. I'm picking it apart. I, th- I think it was a good film, but not, I think it's overrated and not better than Get Out was. Get Out made fucking sense within the realm of its own universe. Yeah, yeah, because like, they have crazy shit, because it's like, yeah, how can you transplant somebody's brain into a different body and still keep that personality and all that. And and that's silly, but in the context of the story, I bought it and it made enough sense. This, there's too many leaps of logic that you have to make to make it make sense. And it's like, I have to pretty much turn my brain off to make this make sense. And I don't like doing that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. If I got to just be like, well, cause reasons, then it's like, mm, yeah. But, yeah, and, and honestly, and just to wrap this up, it kind of ties back to what my issue was with Captain Marvel. Because she gets her powers from the Tesseract exploding. Why would that not just kill her? How does she absorb the energy into her? In Guardians of the Galaxy, they explain that Star-Lord doesn't die from holding the uh, Power Stone because he's, like, part of uh ego the living planet or whatever he's his son so he has like some you know intergalactic genes in him he's not just a normal human okay bruce banner 
he gets hit by the gamma rays and turns into the Hulk, but he was doing experiments and shit, and there was other shit involved in that. You can't just say, hell, even Barry Allen, the Flash, chemicals got put on him and he got struck by lightning. He didn't just get struck by lightning, and now he can run really fast. Captain Marvel, just some shit blew up, and now I got powers, and it's like, that don't really make it's not sense. not how that works. I'm like, at least with Spider-Man, he got bit by a radioactive spider, but it had some science behind it. It's not just an accident happened, and now I got powers. Like, it don't quite work like that. So, yeah, it's like, if you're going to do this and say they're tethered to them, explain why they're tethered, what is the mechanism behind that, why is the organic now tethered to the clone? Like, you can't just throw that shit out there and be like, because it is. Like, that That kind of just tore a lot of the the mythology away from me and just made me just... It, it took me out of the movie. And it, I, I spent too much time after it appreciating what the movie did as far as being a horror movie and focusing too much on the plot of the movie. And, that, and that's not a good thing. But anyway... Thank you for sitting here with us rant and rave about us. <laughs> I swear we did like the movie, I promise. But that being said, um, we are going to get out of here. But thank you for sitting and listening to this review with us. We really appreciate it. And I would like to know, do you guys agree with some of our criticisms? Do you think we're overanalyzing the movie? Do you think we're just being full of shit and hypocrites about it? Please let me know in the comments. Hit me on Twitter. I, I'm really interested to see what other people thought about this and what you think about our complaints about the movie that being said that is it for the show remember you can always find us at our home one giant leap for geeks we are also on itunes spotify google play or anywhere else you get your podcast make sure to show us some love so go ahead and hit that like subscribe rate follow review and all that shit and if you have any comments questions concerns criticisms or you just want to say hi you can always find us ah. At the official OGLG at gmail.com. Also, we are on Twitter at Giant Leap the number four geeks. And we are on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram. I have Pinterest, but I don't accept followers who are random people. <laughs> All you have to search for is one Giant Leap for Geeks. All right, you guys have a good night. Bye. I'm going to bed.